to welcome you here for night one. Before we get into the business, I'm gonna hand the microphone over to my good friend, Jeffrey Wilson. Thank you, Jason. Welcome, Davenport, Quad Cities, Caged Aggression crowd and all of our audience watching on pay-per-view. Welcome to Caged Aggression Determination. And there's no better word to define what has has to go down over these last few months to make these events happen, especially this week. And I can't even thank him enough. And I know I echo everybody's sentiments in thanking the CEO of Caged Aggression MMA, Mike Goodwin, for going to battle and to going for war, not just for his promotion, but for his fighters and for definitely his fans. So please, a big ups to our good friend, the promoter, Mike Goodwin. Thank you, sir. I can't even begin to say how 2020 has disrupted all of our lives. We're all kind of adapting and trying to maintain during these crazy times. And tonight is just a microcosm of that. We've had to make some adaptions. And as we see, we have no food, we have no beverage, but your support for the promotion is absolutely, we cannot thank you enough. So as we move forward tonight, just make sure you have your masks on. Make sure if you do get some water from the water station, you stay in that area to consume your water and maintain your social distancing. But again, this is something we're all kind of adjusting to, but again, thank you for Mike. This is the last event of the year, and his efforts are completely, I, I can't thank him enough, ladies and gentlemen. I know you guys know that too. People put so, so much effort to make these events happen. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, with all the thanks in the world going to the Cage Aggression promotion, the entire team, let's watch some fights. Thanks again, Jeffrey. You know, it goes without saying, it takes fans and a number of partners to put a show like tonight together. Special thanks to all of our event partners for helping to make this, e this evening and this weekend possible. The River Center, the official home of Caged Aggression MMA, 7G Distributing, Bud Light, La Quinta Inns and Suites, Ducky's Formal Wear, Galesburg, Ruby's, Affordable Auto Care, Knockout Barbers, Yabba Dabba's House of Glass, Squirrel's Tree Service, The Foundry, R3 Construction, Bell Animal Hospital, Raw Bar, and The Pearled Up Podcast presents. Again, big special thanks to all of our event partners for helping us make this weekend possible. Special thanks to our production team, Mind Print Productions, The Music Connection, and Say Uncle Photography, much gratitude to all of our fighters, coaches, and teams for their endless and tireless commitment and dedication to be here tonight. And of course, like Jeffrey mentioned, to Cage Aggression President CEO Mike Goodwin for his leadership and abundance of determination for helping to make this weekend happen tonight. All of tonight's bouts have been sanctioned by the Iowa Athletic Commission. Deputy Justin Faferlick, Inspectors Zach Micklewright and George Chamberlain Cage side tonight, our grease man, Kevin Night Night Anderson, our timekeeper, Clint the Antagonist Anderson, our judges, Alex Orozco, Ian Haas, and Matt White, our cage side physician for tonight, Dr. Metcalf, and our card girls for the evening, the lovely Serena, Dot, and Jessica. Commentary provided tonight by Jeffrey Wilson and Eric Showtime Shelton. And when the action begins, our referees in charge, Ben Wilson, and the boss, Bruce Allen. Now if you'll please rise and help me welcome Miss Burlington 2019, Emily Folker, for our national anthem.
Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Miss Burlington 2019, Emily Folker. Now again, like Jeffrey said, you know, our athletes and teams have worked hard for months on end to be here tonight. And, you know, again, all the things he mentioned, this is what it takes for us to be here the entire weekend. weekend. So again, just to make sure we're clear, masks need to be worn at all times. There are free water bottle stations set up around the River Center. The third entrance is closed and is being used as a designated smoking area, and the second street entrance will be the only entrance tonight. And please remember to respect social distancing while in all lines. Once again, we here at Cage Aggression and the River Center want to thank you for your continued support, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I've heard everybody trying here while we've been getting this started, so now's the time we need it, River Center. If you guys are ready for the action, let's make some noise and let's hear the fires. Hear us in the locker room. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Case Aggression Determination. Opening bout, Devin Cross versus Jordan Trowers. Here we go, our final event of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, Devin Cross making his way into the cage. Thank you guys so much for joining us from around the world, cageaggression.tv. Here we go again, ladies and gentlemen, joining me, my good friend, Eric Shelton. How you doing, brother? How you doing, man? I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. He had to, in, in the stead of Jens Pulver, Jens Pulver had something come up at the last second, and here we are. Like we were talking about earlier, adapting and overcoming. Nothing stops Cage Aggression MMA from putting on amazing shows. That's why they have the best promotion in the Midwest. Here we are kicking off our first bout of our third event in a row, two-night event in a row. September we did it, October we did it, so here we are at the last event of the year. Devin Cross squaring off against Jordan Trowers. Hey, man, Mike always makes it happen, no matter the no matter the obstacles, he always makes it happen, so I'm excited. Absolutely. He, without a doubt, does. Devin Cross getting his start in high school wrestling, and the buck bit him right there. Says his opponent tonight is going to be two guys who want to fight and win the fight, and will do whatever to make it happen. Scrappers, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see a scrap. Uh, I've had the, I have had the opportunity to train with Jordan. Jordan Trowers, and uh, he's a stud, man, but with fighters with their debuts, you usually see them have that berserker mode. I'm excited to see if he takes what he does in the gym into the ring, so I'm excited to see what happens. We talk about that so much during these fights, brother, how you got to maintain the emotion, how keep that, keeping that game plan, like you said, from the gym and transferring it here without letting the emotions and the big platform get to you. Yeah, he seemed excited earlier, so I'm excited to see what he does. Jordan fighting out of Davenport, Iowa. He contacted the Eldred Nunn at MMAG four years ago and has been training with him ever since. Says he's just happy to be matched up with anybody, just really, really wanting to fight. Best of, he says he expects to face nothing but the best. Hey, hey, man, he's in the gym sparring with the best. He's out there putting in the work, so I'm excited to see how he goes in here and he performs the way he does in the gym. He's a stud in the gym. I, I sparred him actually last Sunday, man, and it was... nice. It was fun, and he's uh, he's an exciting person inside and outside the cage. So we're, we're about to see what he's got and if he can translate what he does in the gym into the ring. We shall see. He says wrestling and jiu-jitsu is his strong point. He looks up to Daniel Cormier, Kevin Randleman, and Mike Tyson. Those are some pretty strong examples. Woo. Hey, that's a big name to, to uh, live up to, Mike Tyson, man. Right. Those are big influences, without a doubt. No doubt. going to be a banger without a doubt. Devin feels some of his influences are Dustin Poirier, who just signed a fight to be fighting Conor McGregor for a round two. This is Devin's first fight, so we'll see with him too how those jitters, man, how they can handle those jitters. Hey, man, that's a big deal, man. I'm telling you right now, that's a huge deal. With, with debuters, you always got that berserker mode. Right. So we're going to find out. <laughs> berserker mode, I like that. Uh, yeah. We're going to see who, who can handle it the best. These, these lights, man, they it's like the highest level in you, your it, debut. You know what I mean? It can get to you without a doubt. And yeah. that's honestly what we've seen more than once. I mean, like Pat and Jens have said, you've got to have that experience a little bit or just that poise and discipline to stay in game mode so you don't slip into berserker mode. Exactly. 
That's how it gets dangerous. I was talking to Trowers earlier when he was doing the cage walk, man, and he, he said, he was like, man, I, I've watched fighters, I've, I've seen them come in, and I'm like, why are you so nervous? And then today, he, he's been able to feel that, and he was like, he actually told me, he was like, man, the anxiety and everything's high, so we'll Absolutely. see, you know, how he deals with those emotions and how he comes in here and he performs. All the training he's done, I'm excited to see. Well, and you're a perfect example of what this platform means, you know, from one of your fights, you got put into the Ultimate Fighter. I mean, cage aggression is absolutely no joke, ladies and gentlemen. We have LFA veterans, UFC veterans, Bellator veterans, as well as people who have utilized this platform and been successful and moved on to those very, very upper echelon platforms. Cage aggression MMA is absolutely no joke. Super excited, Jordan Trower. is getting ready to step into the ring for this first night, first bout of this two-night event that is the last of the 2020 season. Most definitely, man. I'm excited. Let's let's see what these guys got, man. Absolutely. You, you see him pacing the cage. He's ready. Yeah. He's ready. Game face is on, and he's ready to go. Yes, sir. Touching it up. He's nice guy, as always. Yeah, yes, absolutely. I love seeing that, man. That's sportsmanship. Yeah, shit. it's all sports. Ladies and gentlemen, our first bout of the evening is scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the Cage Aggression Amateur Heavyweight Division. Powered by the Pearl Up Podcast presents, introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighed in at 258 pounds. He trains at Brands Martial Arts. Joining us from Pontiac, Illinois, Devin Cross. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands 5 feet 6 inches tall and weighed in at 242 pounds. He trains at MMAG and Summit Training Center and is sponsored by Murphy's Chiropractic and Keep the Receipt Apparel. Joining us from Davenport, Iowa, Jordan Trowers. Jordan Trowers clowning a little bit as he gets announced. He's got to get his game face on. Hey, man, he's bringing his personality in the ring. Absolutely. I, I love that. Absolutely. I love that. All right, buddy, are you ready? Yes, sir. Buddy, you ready? Yes, sir. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, opening round one. Touch his gloves in the center of the cage. Ooh, big boys. Now be prepared, man. He's a wrestler, so that's exactly what I knew he was going to look for. Jordan Trout with a big takedown. Dropping some bombs here in the beginning of the first round. That's the berserker mode I was talking about, man. We see him inside control now. He's, he's staying strong on top. And you always got to worry about that adrenaline dump too, right? I mean, you know, you come into berserker mode. That's where that endurance and that uh, conditioning comes into play. Yeah, especially in these bigger weight classes, man. You got to pay attention to that. But, you know, him being at a, a high-level wrestler, um, I expect him to be a little more in control of his uh, his energy. So, Looks like he's going for, I can't see a key lock or a Kimura over on that side. Yep, looking for the mount, throwing punches. That's exactly what he needs to do. Got to be careful, man. Like you said, those bigger guys, you don't want to punch yourself out. Yep. Got to make sure these shots count. Jordan dropping bombs He's here. on him, man. He's on him. Devin he's got a full mount. He's, 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 got a, he's not really mounting him. He's staying on top so he can, he can, he can uh, deal with the motion of this guy's hips, which is good. He's looking really good right now. Devin not doing a horrible job of defending against a lot of these shots. Jordan's got to be careful, man. Don't man. punch yourself out. Well, there we go, man. That's it right there. Several unanswered shots. Referee calls a stop to the bout in the opening moments of the first round. Gets it done early, early in the first, man. He's got a lot of fans out here, man. And it's good to see him get the W, man. Just as I was saying that Devin was defending in some of those shots, the referee disagreed. Found all too many of those shots were unanswered, so called a stop to the match. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't see it going any other way, man. He had a he had a high mount. He was he was punishing him, you know. Yeah, he did what he was supposed to do tonight. The other guy as well, you know. He he tried to defend, but you see you see he was uh, Jordan was dominant in what he had to do. So, well, as you said, when when uh, Jordan had that mount, Devin was trying to use those hips to try to pop out or pop him off, but didn't quite work. It's a big boy to try to get off you. Oh, definitely. Sportsmanship in the beginning, sportsmanship in the end. I love it. 
Yeah, he's a great dude, man. He's a he's a character in and out of the gym, man. I'm telling you, he brought it to Ladies the ring Ladies and gentlemen, tonight. your referee, Ben Wilson, has called a stop to this contest at 1 minute, 29 seconds into round one, declaring your winner by TKO, Jordan Trower. All right, we're here with your winner tonight, Jordan Trowers. Jordan, first of all, congratulations on a big win. First time stepping foot in the camera cage. And, and I got to ask you, very well, long time respected coach in the area. What possessed you to step in the cage tonight, sir? Uh, just the motivation, just getting there. Try it out. I train with kills every day. I hear you. I hear you. Now tell us this. As many times as you've seen this done, talk to us about what happened at the beginning of this bout, man. Uh, Joel told me to keep my composure and just take, treat it as a wrestling match, and uh, that's what I did. <laughs> there you go. Well, it was definitely a very impressive performance. Nothing that we wouldn't have expected. What kind of thoughts do you want to leave us with before we let you get to the celebration? I just want to first get a shout out to uh, Murphy's Car Practic and also KTR Keep the Receipt Apparel, Keelan Johnson, that got you, and shout out to MMAG. That's all I got. Well, Jordan, again, congratulations on the win. Want to thank you again for your performance. Let's hear it again for your winners, ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Trowers. out to the ball game take me out to the couch baseball or football or racquetball we don't mind we'll watch any at all cause it's root 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 for the home team no way we don't really care we care i care cause sports are finally back and there's a bad Oh, wow. Coming out to the old school Road Warriors music for all you professional wrestling fans, ladies and gentlemen. R.I.P. Joe Laurinaitis, a.k.a. Animal. But this is the music bringing Alec or Lorenz to the cage, ladies and gentlemen. Fighting out of Hard Drive Performance Center in Cedar Rapids. Training kickboxing, jiu-jitsu in high school with goals of fighting. Feels his strengths are his stand-up. Coming out to Iron Man. Hey man, that goes hand in hand because uh, the hard drive is uh, they 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 work with uh, with Wisconsin's gym. Uh, uh, man, why am I having a brain fart right now? Uh, <laughs> with Showtime Pettis and all those guys. Oh, Duke Rufus. Duke Rufus, man, and uh, that gym right there. The brothers, uh, Eric Cope, his brother runs hard drive. So I'm excited to see how his stand up looks and how those gyms correspond with each other because. Uh, Hard drive, like I said, it's a it's a branch off of off of Duke Rufus. Yeah. yeah, Eric Koch has been somebody that he says he looks up to, so we shall see. Duke Rufus, very well known for training hella champions, like you said, Showtime Pettis, Tyron Woodley. Looking forward to this one, man. Going up against Clarence Jordan. That was a crazy impressive performance. That first one, Jordan Trowers getting paid by the minute there. Taking care of business early. Yes, sir. It's the way you want to do it. You don't want to be sticking around. Get him out of there early. So you can go to Sizzla. making his way to the cage. Shane Barner fighting out of Lions Taekwondo and kickboxing Iowa top team. Always like fighting in Taekwondo. Coach said I was going to star, start MMA training, and here we are. Feels that his stand-up and his determination are the deciding factors. Very appropriate as this is cage aggression determination. I 
from League of Legends. Sean Barner getting ready to face off in the middle of the cage. You got a league pacing. The animal just waiting to pounce yeah, over waiting. here. He's, uh, man, he trains with a lot of top guys that were in the UFC. So I'm expecting to see him be high level, man. And uh, Barner, uh, I don't know too much about him, but he's an Iowa top team. I know a couple coaches over there. I'm excited to see what he brings. Um, I mean, look. I mean, look at this. The stage they're on. So they got a lot to prove. The it's lights nice. are bright, baby. Yes, sir. The lights are bright. Like we said, it can get to some. It can not get. To, you know, others. It affects people differently, and that's you know, no the tail of the tape of people who are able to take it to that next level. You can be super skilled, like you said, in the gym, but if you can't translate that to picking up W's in the cage and exactly. under the lights. And that's a big part of this game, man. A lot of guys are gym fighters and not many can translate into the cage, but we're gonna find out tonight. Like I said, this guy has uh, Lorenz. He's got Eric Koch behind him. He's got a lot of big guys, so we're gonna find out. Ladies and gentlemen, our second bout of the evening is scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the cage aggression amateur light heavyweight division, powered by Raw Bar. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands six feet, three inches tall, and weighed in at 206 pounds. He trains at Hard Drive Performance Center. Joining us from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Alec Lorenz. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands an even six feet tall and weighed in at 201 pounds. He trains at Iowa Top Team. Joining us from Clinton, Iowa, Sean Varner. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready to get on the good foot and do the bad thing for the second fight of Cage Aggression Determination Night Number One. First one ended quickly with a TKO from Jordan Trowers. Let's see if these gentlemen pick up where them gentlemen left off. Sean, you ready? Let's go. Touch gloves in the middle of the cage. Love to see it. Nice low kick to open up the fight. Alec following up with a left jab. This is the other thing we talked about with Jens and Pat, setting up setting up these shots. I mean, he's Whoa. so relaxed right now, man. He just looks like he's ready for this moment. Give me that jab, bro. Over the top now. Seems like he's got him pretty stunned over there on the cage. Seems like he's surviving, though. Sean Varner surviving that first barrage. Lorenz is looking real calm, but he's got to pay attention because uh, Varner's swinging those punches, man. You can always get caught in this game. And Alex is trying to do that one hitter quitter instead of setting it up a little bit. But it's Ooh, nice on him. And, right. oh, look, it's looking. Oh, it looks like it's about to be over. Wicked overhand right from Alex. Oh, he's he on dropped him. Oh. Cancel Christmas. This is over. It's Another done. first round knockout, ladies and gentlemen. Dang. Sean Varner making short work. Of Alec, Le I'm sorry, Alec Lorenz making short work of Sean Varner. Look at this guy, man. He's not even excited. He's ready, man. He's he's a stud. Look at him, man. He didn't even break a sweat. Didn't even break a sweat. He was calm. He was collective, but he handled business. Impressive first round KO by Alec Lorenz. Look at him, man. That's awesome. Here we go with the replay of that. Alex just unloading there with Varner up against the cage. He stunned him with some of them shots. It was the right that it was the right that almost finished it, man. Alec obviously had that range on him too and was able to use that effectively. Big overhand right there. And that was Ooh, it. Doubled up with an uppercut. 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 Wow. Giving him the business. Yes, sir. It was that last overhand right, Chuck Liddell style almost like sent him away. A walk away now. Ladies right. and gentlemen, your referee, Bruce Allen, has called a stop to this contest at 52 seconds into round one, declaring your winner by knockout, Alec Lorenz. Oh, good. Good stuff. Yeah, I went to my car, you want to hold up a little better? All right, come on over here, Alec. All right, we'll switch sides. Anything for you, man. We're here with your winner tonight, Alec Lorenz. Alec, first of all, man, you came in here representing that hard drive MMA shirt proud, throwing some bricks in the meantime, man. How's it feel getting a big statement in such a huge way in your Cage Aggression debut? Yeah, it feels great. Uh, Cage Aggression's a great promotion. I want to give a big shout for Mike 
he worked his butt off to get this event to happen, and I'm so happy. We, we were all really itching to fight, so that he was able to pull it off. Awesome. Now, you, you threw a lot of big shots. I heard your coaches telling you from the corner to kind of pick your shots and watch them. Were you surprised that a few of those early on didn't end up finishing the job? Yeah, he can definitely take a good hit. I'll give him that. Uh, sometimes I, I go in for the kill a little too much. I got to settle down, just get a little more experience with touching and then go for the kill. But it, it, it worked out tonight. So. Well, it definitely looked like it. And if not, it convinced the rest of us here. Look, again, before we let you get to the celebration, is there anything you want to mention or anything that we might have left out here? Yeah, I just want to give a big shout out to my coaches there in Kabiggy. Been working with me a lot. I got a great team back. I got a great Keone as our jiu-jitsu coach. Been working a lot with him. Give a shout out to Coach Kojo with our strength and conditioning. I got a, a lovely fans here tonight. Big turnout. So shout out to all you guys for coming out. Thanks so much. Alec, once again, a lot of eyes on you moving forward from here. One more time for your winners, ladies and gentlemen. Alec Lorenz. Start the evening out with some serious hammers being dropped. so far, ladies and gentlemen. Who will win this one? Brandon Heathcock versus Brandon Hoagland. Jason Burmis from Mixed Martial Mindset. What are we looking at over there, brother? Well, we've got 62.5% for Brandon, and we've got 37.5% for Brandon. Nice. We are looking forward to it, ladies and gentlemen. we got Brent Heathcock making his way to the ring right now, fighting a far west martial arts, Points Arena, California, hometown Decatur, Illinois. And this is something I hear a lot. People, you know, getting out of high school, moving into college, want to channel their energy into something a little more positive. Maybe got into a little bit of trouble and found a way to channel their energy into something more positive. Hey, man, that was my thing, so uh, I have no way to that. Yeah, that's, that's a very common story, man. It's cool that people can turn their life around through mixed martial arts. He says he loves it, man. He hopes this guy is prepared because he definitely knows he am. He is, sorry. <laughs> he says his heart, his stand-up, his commitment to the game and his mental mindset will be the edge. He feels the Diaz brothers, GSP, Anderson Silva, Robbie Lawler, people he looked up to. Now, those are some definite heroes to be looking up to. Huge, man. And uh, this kid, uh, I've seen his fight. Uh, he always comes to fight, man. He's an exciting fighter. You know, he comes out here and leaves it all in the cage, man. So I'm excited to see what he does. Yeah, had the pleasure of calling his uh, most recent fight. I think it was either September or October. Had a very impressive win. And we'll see if he can replicate that performance tonight. Brent Heathcock making his way into the cage. But, man, how can you complain? The first two fights so far, not even getting out of the first round with a couple of pretty impressive. One a TKO, one a knockout. This is what we've come to expect from cage aggression, MMA, bringing the hammers, bringing the heat with the competition. It's going to get better as the night goes. Absolutely. Going up against Brandon Hercules Hoagland tonight. Awaiting his entrance into the ring as Brent Heathcock gets his final preparations together, getting ready to go to war. Yeah, this is how we kick things off, ladies and gentlemen. Just letting you know, all the people who tuned in throughout the world, CageAggression.tv, thank you so very much as we bring in this last event of the year. It's been a struggle, but here we are, doing what we do. Happen. We made it happen. Well, Mike made it happen. Without a doubt, the guy's a hero. He's a miracle maker. Went to war for not only his own company, but his fighters and especially his fans. Dude, he's always been that way. Always been that way, man. As long as I can remember, man. I love the dude, man. Making his way down the ramp, Brandon Hercules Hoagland. Fighting with Skunk River Dojo out of Burlington, Iowa. One of those just wanted to try it, and once he did it, the bug bit him and he fell in love. Feels it should be a good striking match. He's got a lot of respect for his opponent. He's got a lot of fights under his belt. He feels that his stand up and mostly his striking will be his deciding factor, especially his kicks, he says. 
says Dan Hornbuckle is the man, and I always looked up to the Diaz brothers and Max Holloway, another individual being a fan of the Diaz brothers. How can you hate on the Diaz brothers? Hey, man, you gotta love them. You gotta love those dudes, man. The real of the game. Absolutely. Success breeds success, man. How can you be great unless you study greatness? That's yeah. what a lot of these guys say they're doing when they follow a lot of these top elite fighters. Success leaves clues. Brandon Heathcock, Brandon Hoagland about ready to get down here in the cage. This first night, Friday night, cage aggression, determination. So, hey man, but, but Heathcock's not new to this cage. He's been in this cage a lot. Without a doubt. I haven't seen Hoagland make a step through the cage aggression ranking, so I'm excited to see what happens here, man. When you're a hometown guy and you 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 got the edge, man. So let's see how, how uh let's see how uh was it Hoagland? He comes in and, and he shows it shows uh, how he can stand up against the hometown crowd. Without a doubt, and that pressure is something. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is scheduled for three. Three-minute rounds in the Cage Digression Amateur Bantamweight Division, powered by Bell Animal Hospital. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands 5 feet 9 inches tall and weighed in at 134 pounds. He trains at Skywalker MMA and is sponsored by Far West Martial Arts California. Joining us from Decatur, Illinois, Bryn the Jedi Heathcock. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands six feet, two inches tall, and weighed in at 136 pounds. He trains at the Skunk River Grappling Dojo. Joining us from Burlington, Iowa, Brendan Hercules Hoagland. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, in the third bout of the evening. It looks like Brandon might have a little bit of reach on him. We'll see if we're gonna take advantage of that. Oh yeah, he's long, man. He's definitely long. Brandon, you ready? Brandon, you ready? not a short guy either, but it looks like Brandon's got the edge on him. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. No touch in the middle. Open it up with that leg kick. Heathcock switching stances. Fighters opening up with some leg kicks there. Nice teak kick from Mr. Hercules. Get that center. Like, yeah. Again, setting things up, right? I mean, it's not a one shot. I mean, we're going to be able to put the combination together. Nice inside leg kick from Brandon. I'd like to see both guys lead with the punches before they'll throw, throw those kicks. Man. Yeah, combination setting them up. Especially these big tall guys with that length like that. Chopping those legs, man, it obviously inhibits their mobility. Soften those legs up. Nice, oh, nice left hand, yes. Please deal with that stand up. Let's see. Hey, 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 punch away from him. Punch away from him. Yeah, Brennan says he feels it striking his stand up. Good hey. teeth. Go, jab. Work your way in. Hey. The outside leg kick there. Soften up them legs. Brennan doing a good job of switching position there. Let's go. Shoot him to the body. Good to see these guys taking their time. Definitely didn't come out in berserker mode, like you said. Definitely, man. These are veterans, man. As far as I know, both of them have had a lot of fights, a lot of experience. So, oh, we got blood already. Got a little blood coming from the nose of Hercules. Good return from the kick. You got to make them pay from them like this. Yes, absolutely. Definitely showing respect to each other's prowess. Not rushing in, being reckless. His overhand right or left there barely missed. Ooh, nice upward high kick, yeah. He's got them legs. Hey, oh, oh, he got ready to bang. He's about this. Ooh, he's catching him with those overhands, man. That's looking. Tying up. Scrambling there. Looks like Hercules is definitely respecting Heathcock's ability here. Yep. Go circling in the middle of the cage, feeling each other out. Open up this round one. 
Yeah, it's not normal you see two southpaws standing across from each <laughs> other. That's a that's that's a hard stance to deal with. Yeah, I was I was asking Jens and Pat in previous fights, how, why is that so difficult fighting southpaw fighters? Southpaw versus southpaw is difficult because they're used to going against orthodox fighters. Um, I mean, you can tell both these guys are they're dealing with it, you know, differently, and it's uh, it's definitely a hard thing to deal with when you when you're used to fighting orthodox busy, fighters. Brendan's switching though; he's he's switching stances, which makes it even more confusing. Right. <laughs> which is he gonna go, right or left? Oh, both of them are. That's that next level, man. That's the, the new hybrid fighters, man. They can go both ways. Ambidextrous, if you will, yeah. Brent, that's when you got a punch. Trying to utilize that length a little bit with them kicks, them high kicks. I mean, having a name like Hercules, you gotta live up to yeah, it. That's a, you set the bar pretty high there, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Hercules trying to bring some knees there to the midsection into the first round. How would you score that one? Ooh, that was so, it was close, man. They were back and forth. Um, I would give I would give it to Heathcock just for the, the pressure, you know. Um, yeah. He's got a cut on his eye, and, it, and he was landing a lot of harder shots, more significant strikes, I believe. There we go. It's so uh, somewhat subjective, I wouldn't say subjective, somewhat subjective with judges watching, like, what is it, ring generalship, significant strikes, yep. blood on the face. Yeah, so he, I feel like he had the ring control, and he was landing the most significant strikes. So. Right. I would definitely give it to Heathcock in that. But you never know what the judges are seeing, you know? Precisely. That's why you never want to leave it to the judges, ladies and gentlemen. And that is a testament that I can live up to, man. <laughs> Put him to sleep early. Hey, I've never lost a fight via submission or knockout. So decisions is all I know, man. And, and the ref or the judges is something you don't want to deal with. And you're still in the game, right? You got an up and coming thing going on, you said overseas, right? Uh, yeah, I actually signed out with an Ari to Aries uh, promotion out in Paris, so that's what I'm preparing for. But next weekend I have a boxing match coming up. Just just still student of the game, trying to perfect every aspect Staying of it. Staying busy, man. Good for you. Congratulations, man. That's Paris, France, by the way. My man's international. Yes, sir. Here we go. The action begins. Round two. Trying to find a home for them big high kicks there. I like Hoagland's high kicks, man. They're nice, man. I think you should set them up a little more. Yeah. Heathcock's waiting for him, though. Had that leg, caught that kick. Could have did an inside trip, took him down. Ooh, spinning back fist attempt by Hercules. Missed. Heathcock's got a, a, a good understanding of the range, man. And when he wants to engage, he closes the distance. And it, it's, it's nice to see a fighter like that because that's hard to do. He's staying elusive, too. He's fainting. Looking real nice out there. He's mixing it up well. Keep him guessing. Switch levels. I'd like to see Hoagland a little more long with his jab, man. His arm seemed like his reach is super long, so take advantage of that. Yeah. Like I said, he's kind of putting that pressure on him, though. Yeah, but he's staying, he's staying at Hoagland's range, which is yeah. where Hoagland should be prospering, but it seems that Heathcock has a more understanding of, of range. And, uh, he seems to be landing a little more bigger shot. But well, he's staying elusive, too, like you said. He's, he's actually staying outside at the end of those potentially long punches and long kicks, but he's able to slip them. Yeah. And he's staying just also inside sometimes, too, kind of not sneaking on the end of those. In and out, in and out. Yes, sir. He's switching stances constantly. It's just, uh, it's you're unsure of what he's going to do, which, which makes him more unpredictable. It's good to see. Yes. Predictably unpredictable is dangerous. He seemed to be throwing those legs with the authority. Yeah, it's a setup. Be more effective. Yes. Yeah, he's just setting up his overhand. I mean, as you can see, he's landing it. It's just, uh, see, uh, Hoagland was just, he got that jab out. And when you can do that, you can win a fight with just a jab. So. Right. Especially with that kind of leg. Ooh, yeah. nice left. Deep top on the hole with that left, straight left. Bring him here, Brandon. Nice right the Welt on Hercules' uh, right leg there. He 
you just expect it, firing off all these leg kicks. We haven't seen it hit the mat at all, so we got an exciting fight going on here, guys. Straight stand up. Yep. End of the second round. Both fighters still busy. Looks like Hercules slowing down a little bit. It yeah, seems like Heathcock still got that pressure I, on. I think I think Heathcock just has him confused with the switches, stances, and the and the steady feints. It, it makes it a little hard to let your hands go when when you got a fighter like that, man. He's he's definitely mixing it up well. Um, Hercules just has to get more comfortable with guys like that because the, I mean, the, the higher levels, that's what you're seeing now. We got guys like TJ Dillashaw, Corey Sanhagen, guys that are mixing it up and switching stances. It makes things look difficult, you know? So uh, I'm excited to see, uh, I'm excited to see, man, the new generation fighters, you know? Yeah, just able to do everything, prepared yeah. for everything. Burmis, how's our pole looking over there, bud? Is it switched up at all? Well, it's pretty even, just like the fight seems to be. You got Hoagland at 47% and Heathcock at uh, 52 and change. And I'd probably give both rounds to Heathcock. He edged him out. He controlled the uh, cage a little bit better. Landed a few more strikes, but a very even fight so far. Without a doubt. Both fighters staying busy, but I think Heathcock is edging him out. Just a little bit more business as we open up round three, ladies and gentlemen. You gotta love it because the last two fights have been good endings. We spoiled him. Yeah. <laughs> Heathcock opens up with some nice outside leg kicks on Hercules. Heathcock trying to get inside there. Hey, man. You know, to be honest with you, man, I've uh, fought on cards with Heathcock and I, I've watched his evolution, man. It's, a, it's, it's really good to see him evolve as a fighter man he's looking so much better than he used to because he's finally found his style um, not taking anything from from hogan but you know i'm seeing a little bit more pressure a little bit more you know uh composure from from heathcock nice he's developed developed as a fighter you want to see him evolve and not stay you know one-dimensional and staying the same when you last saw him that's obviously a testament of how serious he takes the game Definitely. He's been active too, man. He's had a lot of fights. Good leg kick from, from Ho Hoagland. Missing with that right hook there. Ooh. Grins trying to move in for the kill here. He, he thought he didn't look comfortable. He's dropping his yeah, hands. Yeah. He's starting to showboat a little bit. That's good to see, man. Take advantage of it, though. Otherwise, you get clown like Krusty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Never know, man. This is a crazy game. I have to say, Hercules is doing a good job of slipping a lot of these punches. Oh, yeah, he's, he's definitely got awareness, man. He's just got to have confidence in it. If you don't have confidence in the, in the ring, it will eat you up. Yes, sir. You can weave all the punches you want, but the judges are not seeing that. They're seeing running. They're seeing you avoiding the action. So... Let's see if he can take control of the ring, man. I see him. He takes he takes a stand for a little bit, and then he goes to the cage. Just under a minute left here in the final third and final round. These guys both are finding homes with their leg kicks, but not being able to take advantage of other, other than that. Heathcock's left leg is looking real red. It's his shin, everything. He's, both of their legs are, yeah, are beat up. They'll feel that one in the morning. Oh, yeah. No doubt. The overhand left lands, and then he switches stances, which makes it more of a problem. To defend, yeah. yeah. He's got ooh, nice ooh, knee from Hercules knee. against the cage there. That length is what he has to use. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt, even in the tight clinches, he needs to be throwing knees, tight elbows, using his using his agility because he seems like he can move well. I wonder how much Muay Thai Hercules has. I imagine a little Muay Thai, that guy can be some damn some clubs. Yeah. I mean, his awareness of punches and stuff is, is definitely there. It's just, he's meeting a guy that is coming with nothing but pressure, and that's hard to deal with. Yeah, that's definitely hard to deal with. And that's where that conditioning and endurance comes into play. That was close, but I do believe he edged that out, and I think the pressure he put on him is going to be an exciting factor. Hermes, what do you think over there? I 100% agree, and so do the polls. They say they've edged him out 55% to 45%. And 
And the truth is, he was just able to close the distance. He was constantly putting his opponent up against the cage, um, while Hercules was unable to really put anything other than maybe one strike together and back off. He was really succumbing to the pressure of Heathcock. Without a doubt. Would have loved to have seen him use that link to more of his advantage, uh, of keeping Heathcock outside. Yeah, that's uh, that. You know, that's something you work on, though. When you watch your fight, you see um, there's something you can work on. You see, he's he's able to deal with the pressure. He's able to deal with getting hit. So it's something that he needs to work on. Is is the tie clinch in the in the range? That's all he needs to figure out. Uh, and that goes to the coaches. That's something they should be focusing on with a fighter like that because he's definitely got the skill and ability. It's just. Uh, you know, some, you know, in this game, you got to work on every aspect of it. He's got that frame like an Anderson Silva frame, and if everyone goes back in the archives and see what Anderson Silva did to Rich Franklin to win the middleweight title, I mean, that was the Muay Thai clinic right there. Yeah. It's hard to watch, but still, that's what you can do when you have that kind of length advantage, and you can put it, you know, you can make it work for you. He showed a, he showed a couple moments of uh, uh, stardom in, in the fight, so, you know, I'm not knocking him. But no, I'm, absolutely. I definitely know he's got his game opponent, man, and he's fought the best in case of Gretchen. He always brings it, man. So uh, fighters like that are sometimes tough to get over it, but they're definitely a learning lesson. You know, so I'm mean, anybody who gets in the cage gets that gets that kudos from me because that's no, that's not no an doubt. easy thing. No doubt. Both showing respect to each other. Go always good to see. I love that, man. It's, it's such a violent sport, and you know everyone thinks it's all about that cockfighting. Whatever. No, these guys have the utmost respect. They're martial artists, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to our judges scorecard for our decision. Our judges scored this contest 30, 27, 30, 27, and 29, 28, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Bryn Heathcock. I can't argue. All right, we're here with your winner, Bryn Heathcock. Bryn, first of all, congratulations on a very, very tough and hard-earned victory. Um, yeah, I, I, I gotta wonder to myself, man, just last month, not even a full month ago, down a full division, very convincing win, you take a fight, a division up. What's going on there? Man, uh, it's really whatever the boss wants. I like to stay active, I wanna fight. Uh, I was the champ at 35, which I'm, I'm coming back for that too. So uh, I'm coming for 25, 35, whoever wants it. Uh, I feel good everywhere, so. All right, so most of the time you're on the opposite side of that where you usually have a little bit of a length advantage, a little bit of a size advantage. Tonight, your opponent had that advantage on you. What kind of problems did that present for you or just anything that you weren't expecting? It, uh, it definitely made it a little harder uh, to get, get my combo started. Uh, hard to time his jab. Uh, he's real long. Uh, so I just wanted to turn it into a banger. Uh, you wanted to call me out, so I'm going to bring an action to you. Uh, and let's get in there and do it. So, Well, you know, it's hard to look past what's right in front of you. With this one out of the way, what's around the corner for Bryn Heathcock? Uh, whatever, like I was telling Goodwin, uh, Wherever he wants me, wherever he needs me, uh, 25, 35. Uh, there's a fight going on tonight uh, in the 35 division. I wouldn't mind the uh, guy that ends up losing that. Uh, I'd like to maybe run that back. I fought both those guys, so uh, we'll see. Whatever happens. All right. Well, did it, is there anything that I missed before I let you get to the locker room to start the celebration? Um, I'd say... Uh, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the word, and the word is through Christ, uh, Romans 10, 7. And faith has uh, brought all this together. Uh, shout out to Mike Goodwin. Uh, I don't care if I ever even made it to the UFC, I've got to fight for Mike Goodwin, and what he does for these fighters is ridiculous. Uh, hats off to him, and uh, thank you guys. Hope to see you soon. No, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for your winner and a class act, Bryn Heathcock.
good scrap the mayor right there congratulations to Brent Heathcock impressive victory kept the pressure on here we are Edwin Jimenez versus Liam Morris ladies and gentlemen you got Mr. Jimenez making his way to the cage it's interesting you're talking about the last fight uh, Heathcock there you've seen him evolve and how important that is for fighters to evolve especially if they want to take it to the next level. Hey, definitely, man. It, it's amazing to see, man. I love I love being a part of this organization, man. I came, like I said, I came up in this organization, man. I, I was here when we were in the, in the barn in Knoxville, man, and now look at what Mike Goodwin has, has accomplished. It's amazing to see, and the way these fighters respect him, that just shows you the way the production is and shows you the way he takes care of his fighters. The same way I'm here at Diamond Tate, he's taking care of me all the way up till now. And uh, man, it, it's amazing to see what he does with this stuff. It, it, even in the even in the way the world is right now, you know. Without a doubt, I mean, you just see a lot of fight promoters, and the fight game can be potentially shady. But individuals like Mike Goodwin completely redefines fight promoters and fight owners. Have their, his allegiance and his loyalty to his fighters and his fans. I I, it's, I just I'm blown away by it. Me too, man. Me too. Burmis, what's our uh, numbers looking like for this poll for Edwin Jimenez versus Liam Morris, my friend? Well, Liam Morris is edging it out with 58.33%, while Jimenez has 41.67%, but it's moving as we speak now to 56 and 44%. Really looking forward to this one. Absolutely. Hyphenate. Correction, Edwin Jimenez. Jimenez versus Morris. I just happen to know a gentleman in high school named Joe Jimenez. Shout out to Joe Jimenez. <laughs> hey. hey, you never know. Right. You never know. Thank you to my man Jason Vargas for correcting that. <laughs> and we're creeping to 50-50 right here as we speak. Oh, in my fact, goodness. flipping back and forth. So get in there on the polls, folks. They're live. Neck and neck as Liam Morris wakes, makes his way to the cage. Sock Valley Jiu-Jitsu, Sterling, Illinois. Started in Kimpo, became a huge Bruce Lee fanatic, and then fell in love with the violence. <laughs> oh, Bruce Lee, that's a new one. That's a new one, man. Yeah, the Bruce, the Bruce Lee. You can't really go wrong with the father of Jeet Kune Do. V. Water, my friend. Thoughts on the matchup? He loves it. Great challenge. Definitely a step up. Always ready for a battle. Hey. It's interesting to see how he embraces the fact that this is a step up, and hopefully he's ready for that step up and to pit his skills. And if you fight for Kay's aggression, that's all you can expect, man. Uh, Mike does a great job in matching these fighters up. And like I said, I can attest to that, man. I never had an easy fight. It's something that you got to look forward to stepping in this cage is having a tough fight. So, Yeah, there, there's no phoning it in here at Kay's aggression MMA. Each time you step into the cage, even if you make short work of your opponent, everyone is tough and game and ready to fight when you come here. Liam says his endurance and his cardio will be his deciding maker. And one of his models of people who looks up, looks up to is Michael Chandler, someone from my neck of the woods out in St. Louis that just recently signed with the UFC, obviously coming out of Bellator. Him walking out, uh, he just walked out with a, a former opponent of mine, Stephen Gladhill, which was, to this day, one of the toughest fights I've ever had. So I can attest that I, I know his coach. It seems that he's with a, a great coach, so he's got... He's got the right people behind him. Let's see if he can go in here and he can uh, approve what he's been working and, and what he's done so far. Oh, and that's another huge component of success in the fight game. You could have as much natural skill and even skill from training, but how, how important is surrounding yourself? Answer me here. Ladies and moment. gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the Cage Digression Amateur Flyweight Division, powered by R3 Construction. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, six inches tall and weighed in at 126 pounds. He trains at Pura Vida, BJJ and MMA. Joining us from West Allis, Wisconsin, Edwin Jimenez. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, eight inches tall and weighed in at 124 pounds. He trains at Sock Valley Jiu-Jitsu and is sponsored by Big Dicks Custom Rods and Baldwin Builders. Joining us from Sterling, Illinois, Liam Morris. Here we go, Edwin Jimenez versus Liam Morris. I was asking you, brother, what's the, what's, how important is it to have the people right surrounding you? Do you have natural talent? 
you have skill and all that, but how important is creating that right team? Uh, man, I've been a, I've fought fighters that are just naturally ta talented, and I've fought fighters that are greatly coached, you know, and uh, uh, Stephen Gladhill was one of those guys that, man, he, he was a stud. He was a hard fighter. It actually happened here on Case Aggression, so nice. I know he's a great coach because I've seen what he's done over there with his gym. Um, over, the, over the past four years, he's made, he's made something great, so, I mean, as you can see, these guys are high level. Ooh, scrapping up against the cage. Big uppercut. Seemed a little low, but ref didn't see it, so. Watch that right hand, man. Both coming out kind of with that frenetic berserker energy a little bit. A little bit, man, but they're settling down a little bit. We're going to start seeing a little more technique in these guys. You can tell they're both high level. Liam trying to that outside leg kick. Coming in, slipping it. Jimenez throwing hard shots. Good knee to the rim. Oof. Jimenez putting it on him against the cage. Oh, good ball there. Nice show of strength from Jimenez. He's throwing him off. He tried to that takedown. Morris not having none of it, though. Jumping off the cage, trying to hit him with a Showtime Superman. <laughs> Look, he's, can, he's, he's dealing with this berserker mode. He's dealing with it well. Um, again, I can attest that to his coaches, man. That they probably put him on it like that often. Jimenez showing some strength. Ooh, Ooh. Nice attempt at a flying knee. Flying knees. Jimenez Still slips flying it. Knees. No worry. Jimenez made him pay for it, too. Fixing his glove here. Let's go. Let's go. Got him off. Now, be smart now. Hey, be smart. Hands are up tight. Morris got to stick to that game plan. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. doing well. Good job there. Jimenez giving him, the, Jimenez giving him them hands, man. Jimenez, these are 25 Oh, he dropped it right. Dropped he is out like a light, wow. ladies and gentlemen. He wow. is out over in the first round. Wow. Looked like a wicked right hand. It was nice, man. It looked like he was going woke up pretty fast, but hey. Wow. One hitter quitter in the opening moments of the first round, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, 25 division, that's a hard hitter, man. That's, wow. That's a hard hitter right there, man. Oh, that's yeah, that, I tell people, you don't, don't sleep on these little guys, man. They no. pack dynamite. They, they, I'm telling you right now from experience, man, we all hit hard. I'd love to see that, man. Good, good uh, sportsmanship there. Man, Liam had no, I mean, he didn't even see that one coming. Oh, once, once, once Jimenez had him up in the cage, even from the opening bell, he was unloading on him. So you know the way he was blocking, though, with his hands up, this is in boxing. You know these gloves are smaller; they they sneak through the cracks. So it's got to be a little more defense there. You know, getting out of getting out of the uh, being in the corner, man. You don't want to be there because guys like uh, Jimenez, they, they'll make those shots. They'll make them shots count. So. Jimenez showed his strength early in some of those scrambles, and obviously exemplified in some of those strikes, man. Here we go. We got the replay right here. We dropped him before, man, but it capitalized on it the second time. Yeah, we had him his back against the cage. Ooh. Wow, wicked right hand dropped him. Man. Slow mo, thank you guys, and boom, cancel Christmas. <laughs> Held that last punch, though. Good, good. Absolutely. There. Nice work from Edwin Jimenez, making short work of Liam Morris' first round. He paid by the minute tonight. Despite the polls, which seemed pretty close. Uh, they were pretty close, but they actually slipped away from Jimenez as the uh, fight progressed. And he was hitting deep, even on yeah. that uh, flying knee attempt. He hit slammed a big uppercut in there. And that overhand right that landed behind the ear put him down. Really excited to see what this kid has in the future. Without a doubt. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Ben Wilson, has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, five seconds into round one, declaring your winner by knockout, Edwin Jimenez. Very impressive performance by Edwin Jimenez. All right, come on over here, Edwin. We're here with your winner, Edwin Jimenez. Edwin, first of all, man, congratulations on such a, such a, convincing Cage Digression debut. How's it feel getting such a stunning victory tonight? Man, 
I feel amazing. Uh, first of all, my opponent was very respectful and like he was a really nice person since for the weigh-ins. I would have, um, I couldn't be more grateful for him and this fight of opportunity, especially during the tough times of COVID. But man, I can't even, I can't even put it into words. This is my first knockout. I'm just, um, I, I'm a little bit disbelieved too myself. <laughs> understandable, understandable. Well, look, you came down here. You looked like you were on a mission as you were walking into the cage. You did a great job stalking him down and cutting off the angles and the rest of the cage. What was the game plan coming into the night? Man, we had like a different game plan than what went down. But to be honest, I'm always just prepared for like whatever go the fight takes me. You know, if it takes me to the ground, if it takes me to standing up, if it takes me all three rounds, if it takes me knockout, it don't matter. I'm ready. Just I came here to put a show and give it all I got. Well, look, I tend to talk too much. We had the replay up on the screen for you to walk us through it. But I'll tell you what, in case we missed anything, why don't you include that? Or if there's anyone you want to thank, actually, there it is. Walk us through that. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like most of the time, like I said, I'm just, just like whatever he gives me, that's what I'll go for. And what we were practicing on was kicks and hunting down like the, the object, man, you know. You we were working on just not getting hit and hitting him. <laughs> well, it looks like you exe your game, executed your game plan excellently tonight. I want to congratulate you once more on the performance, and we're definitely looking forward to seeing more of Edwin Jimenez in the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for your winner here tonight, Edwin Jimenez. Ridiculously impressive performance. Congratulations to Edwin Jimenez on a very impressive first round KO as we move into our last fight before we head into our intermission. Dwight Matters versus Martin Bansill. Yeah, Dwight Matters. I like that. Dwight Acuna. Let's see if he does matter. <laughs> fighting out of Jackson Wink MMA out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And if you haven't heard of Jackson Wink, ladies and gentlemen, that is where what they say the greatest of all time fights John Bones Jones and as well as Holly Holmes who dethroned Ronda Rousey back in the day. Another individual, Dwight says he wanted to change his life and MMA helped him do that very thing. It's a very common thread you hear a lot of people, man, who really wanted to look for an opportunity to change their life in MMA or martial arts. Of course, gave man, them that path. This is, the, hey, this is the outlet for that, man. It's, and I can attest, like I said, but a lot of fighters, man, you've got fighters that are just, they just come out here to fight and they don't succeed. It's the ones that are hungry that went through the trials and tribulations that succeed. And I've seen it time and time again. Yes. So I love that story, man. I love that they had to struggle to get to where they're at and they finally found something where they can they can shine and they can show their true potential. Without a doubt, trial by fire, man. Without struggle, there is no progress. So he also feels his ability to mix his fighting style as his strength. Feels that his mom is his role model. That's adorable. Hey. Moved from Oakland to Albuquerque to follow his MMA career, man. That's so very cool, man. Hey, you know the moms, they'll get the belt and the shoes. They'll make yeah. it tougher than anybody. <laughs> you know? Don't let me get that switch. Don't let me get that switch. Go pick it up. <laughs> Always the worst when you had to pick out your own switch. Dwight Matters making his way into the cage. Awaiting his opponent coming out to Thunderstruck, Martin Bansell out of Central Illinois Combat Club. Watch this guy fight Blake Goodbauer last November. Came up a little bit short. Came up a little bit short looking to uh, reverse his fortune here tonight. He feels it will be a good show considering both of our records. He says he has heart and he won't back down. Sometimes those type of fighters are the toughest ones, man. Absolutely. We're about to see some hammers being thrown, ladies and gentlemen. The heavyweights are about ready to get in here and throw it down. Like I said, this will be our last fight before our intermission, but buckle up because I'm telling you, when the heavyweights step into the cage here in Cage Aggression, you aren't disappointed. 
training with the legend Bob Long. So, hey, man, I, I'm expecting him to come in here with a lot of skill, a lot of... Yeah, Bob Long critiques a lot of things, man. He's always been in my career, and he's never even been my coach. So, nice. let's see, let's see. Says he looks up to a few people, including Matt Hughes. A product, an incredible product from the militant fighting system. The legend, Matt Hughes. Like you said, his coach, Bob Long, gave me a run for his money until I was invited to train with Dan Hornbuckle. He says they don't call him the handler for nothing. <laughs> hey. Jumping in here, I'm a big Dan Hornbuckle fan. Nice. And, uh, you know, I remember Dan Hornbuckle from his Bellator days. It wasn't until uh, Ben Astrid mopped the floor with him. <laughs> ben. Sleepy That's, Ben, uh, who got dealt with by Jorge in five seconds. Oh. What's our polls looking like here, boss? Well, we got uh, quite the underdog in Marty Vansell. It seems, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Dwight Matters. Marty Vansell's up 70 to 30%. So a lot of people expect Ladies Marty to come out big. Our next Anxious bout of the evening is scheduled for five three-minute rounds for the Caged Aggression Amateur Heavyweight Championship, powered by the Foundry. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands six feet, six inches tall, and weighed in at 265 pounds. He trains at Jackson Wink MMA. Joining us from Albuquerque, New Mexico, Dwight Akuma Maders. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands six feet, one inch tall, and weighed in at 240 pounds. He trains at the Central Illinois Combat Club and Peoria Muay Thai, and is sponsored by Walker's American Martial Arts. Joining us from Spring Bay, Illinois, Marty Vansel. Big boys got to bring to us. Keep us posted, Burmis, on how this uh, poll changes. You never know with these heavyweights, but I'm talking about uh, huge men looking in front of me. Matters, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> Fighting out of Jackson Wink. I know the training's top notch there. We'll see if he can bring it to the cage aggression case tonight. And that's long even if jab the polls go uh, long enough for this fight, big boys in there. Right. Swinging the hammers. He's keeping them hands moving. You really don't know. Yeah. But yeah, these are those guys that could, you know, the one-hitter quitter could put you to sleep by just grazing you. Oh, yeah. Nice uppercut from Marty Vansel. Vansel seems the one to just tie it up on the cage. Yeah, Dwight doing a good job of keeping those jabs out there. Yeah, he's popping that jab nice. Keeping that distance. And with that size, that's what he wants to do. Keep that, keep Marty at, the, at his distance there. Keep him on the outside. Already unloading on some kicks there. Already finally getting it where he wants it. Bringing them knees to his knee, inside of the knee there. Controlling the wrist. Oh, he's trying to do a tip toss. Oh, nice, nice. Got him. Came on top. That's a big boy to be taken down. Oh, yeah. See what he can do with this now. You got to be careful here. Uh, you got to be careful here. Matters can come to the back in this position here. He's slipping on that head and arm right now, fellas. Looks like he might be going for that arm triangle potentially if he can scoop that arm over. He's got to go a lot lower for that. Uh, seems he's just trying to control. What is Matters' move right here? Matters needs to sneak out to the back right now. He's, he's doing well, but he's always oh, oh, see, that was that was that was great by Marty. He came to the top. Maintaining control after that scramble. Dwight has to come straight to his feet. Doesn't want to play this game here because it seems Matters know what's going on on the ground. Knees to that midsection. Ooh, got him with a good shot. Good yeah, he did. Shot. Dan Henderson, Fedor Emelianenko ooh, coming from ooh, underneath there. Ooh, big unloading against the cage. Now he got him hurt. Got Referee's him hurt. keeping an eye on him. Oh, oh, oh. He 
Vansel not defending these. Marty Vansel unloading on the cage now to the midsection, uppercuts back to the center of the cage. Eyes, he's a little wobbly still. He's still hurt. Without a doubt. He definitely still throwing him. the jab. Ooh. Ten seconds left in that first round. Will now Dwight Matter why. survive? Now we see why he wanted to tie up, man. You never know. What a chin on Matters. My goodness. Wow. He's, he's, uh, this right here is giving him time to recover. So I, I, want, I want Matters to break away. Into that first round. I think this is going to become a matter of that endurance and conditioning. Matters looks very worse for wear after that first round. Marty Vanso looking fairly fresh over there, even though he put in some serious work. I always watch their midsection to see how fast it's going in and out. You know what I mean? Hey, Especially with big boys. He was he was hitting the body nice in the clinch, so that'll take it out of you. On top of of, of uh, rocking him, that's tough to that's tough to overcome. Burmese, how's that pole looking? It's got Vansel ahead, 64%, to Dwight Matters, 36%, and I think that's just about right. I would have liked to see a little bit more body work when he had him up against the cage and hurt. I think that could have ended it. The guy's got a stone-cold chin. He took some down big, down. big shots. Getting ready to start round two. Not sure how much further this one's going to go. You can never know, ladies and gentlemen. Marty seemed to have a pretty solid command of things at the end of that first round there. We'll see if he can continue that into the second round. Keep an eye on the endurance in the gas tank of Dwight Matters. You ready? For Maters, if I'm tearing up his name, I apologize, sir. Outside leg kick from Marty Vansel starting out this second round. Dwight seemed to shake the cobwebs out. A little bit. That's all you need is that little break. Yeah. Let's see if he can come out and do the thing. This outside leg kick goes for a single. Tried to take him down. Got him pushed up against the cage there. Drilling. Artie Vansel drilling his knee into uh, Mater's knees. Slowing down the big man. Dwight Mater's coach imploring he get his back off the cage. Seemed like he was having more success out in the middle, kind of popping that jab. Uh, the switch to the underhook, goes to, goes to the back and breaks away. That's nice. He's got to throw more than just that jab. He's got to mix it up. Yes, sir. Marty's slipping it. Uh-oh, here he goes again. Marty has a good good power under under that armpit. He throws that punch, and he's rocked him earlier, so let's see. Oh, he's, up, he's on his that back. Is he getting that hook in? He's, he's working on it. Looks like going for an arm. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He's going to he's gonna try to mount him right now. He's, he's got that arm for that arm triangle now. He's going to try to mount him. He's not going to finish it there. He's not out. Referee, hold on. Oh, he's he coming to the top. Good, good. He went to Mal. That was nice. Made his corners telling him to turn in, which he was doing, but then Marty Vanso got that mount back. Switch it. Hit position. Turn, White. Turn. White trying to get half guard. And from there, with the bigger guys, he has. you got to work step by step. So he's working. He's getting the underhook. He's working to get back up. Maynard has that leg trapped. Marty oh, going to the back, oh, going back to Mount. Got one minute left in this second round, ladies and gentlemen. He's in a, he's in a perfect position here to rain down. He's working that, looks like he's trying to hit that armbar, but yeah, he's definitely dropping some bombs. Oh, uh -oh. See, with the heavyweights, man, they, they switch positions so fast, man. Let's see if Maynard has any endurance to do anything with it. Yep. Marty looking to his coach for, for answers. Coach is saying strike. Oh, the White's running down now. Trying to get position. I don't know how much Stank is on those shots, though, at this point. Other hand. Grab his hand. Go. 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 Other hand. Coach is imploring to him to start striking. Start dropping some bombs. Oh, Gotta watch out for the, the back of the head, head without a doubt. Yeah. Go, we got. Go, Dwight. Come on. Watch it up. Go, Dwight. End of the second round. A little better performance from Dwight Maters this time. Withstand the storm, man. And, and these heavyweights, man, the tables can turn that fast. 
Coming down to the home stretch, the third and final round. That's what's interesting to see. What are these big boys got in the tank after those first two rounds? Do you think that was enough at the end to uh, give the round to Dwight, or do you think that's going to be a Vansel round? He, could, he controlled about three and a half minutes of yeah. it, but then was on his back for the last 90 Might seconds. Might have been a little too little too late, but again, like yeah. we talk about all the time, you never know what the judges are looking you at. You never know, man. Sometimes it's short-term memory for these judges, man. Right. And they only see the last a minute or so, so... It's tough to it's tough to determine from this way, but uh, as our poll tightened a bit, or how are we looking? We're still looking at 65-35, but like you guys said, coming into the third, it's really anybody's fight right now. It absolutely is. We've got one in the tank. The wide up off the off the bench early. Yeah, that's what I was he's gonna off say. Off the bench early, it seems like he's ready to make something happen. Let's see. Let's see. Time will tell. Hardy Vansel looking. Looking still pretty fresh. We'll see how we close out this third and final round with Dwight Maters and Martin Vansel, ladies and gentlemen. He's tight now. Oh, one, two. We've seen a lot of jabs. I haven't seen a one, two from him yet. Dwight's starting to feel himself a little bit. Oh, yeah. Might be one of those guys, late, late starters. I don't want to waste too much time because it is close. Definitely. Ooh, good front tee. Vansel's, he's, he's breathing pretty heavy with that mouth Ooh. open right now, guys. Doesn't look Without a doubt. Doesn't look like he's going to be on the offense. He's backing up pretty hard. He's definitely slowed his offense down. Nice uppercut. Marty Vansel goes for that single leg. Oh, Ooh, he, he gets finishes him. it. He finishes it. But let's see if he can control the position here. He's going for the guillotine. Go for the guillotine. You got to get a guard on it. Hey, fight. Don't stay in that guard. Mike, get your knees. Go to your side, Marty. Go to your See if he can make this guillotine happen. It's hard to do, especially it's in the third round. It's hard to do in that sweat. position, man. He needs to just come to his feet and bail on that. He tries. Marty's, he's, uh, he's, he's, new, he's not new to this type of stuff, so he's... Absolutely not. Going for that. Is it a Darcy got there? Slipping in? He, I think he's looking for a guillotine as well. He's fighting for that guillotine. Arm in. They're both fighting the hands well. Without a doubt. With knees of the body. Let's see if he can hit the switch. Because it... Look, here... Here, Dwight needs to go out the back door and, and sneak to the back. Marty's doing well. He's not. He's not new to it. Controlling that knee. One minute and 20 seconds left here in the third and final round. Martin Vansel controlling the position right here up against the cage. He has plenty of time here to work. The overhook is controlling. Is controlling Dwight. He can't. Dwight can't come up. That's good. That pressure against the cage, too. It's hard for him to move around. Oh, yeah. He's trying. He's trying. Looking for a guillotine. Uh-oh. Looking for a guillotine there. It's tough to He's finish there, there but yeah, without a doubt. It's tough to finish there, but when you're tired, you never know. I've seen worse. He's still going. Punch, 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 Marty. Have In Marty's case right here, I'll be looking to punch and, and make the fight look more convincing. Close it out. Close it out strong. Got 20 seconds here left in the final round. I think Martin Vansel here squeezed out. White's trying, man, but there's not enough activity in that third and final round. Gets up smiling, but we'll see what the judges see. Both very tough individuals, close fight. But I do believe Mr. Vansel squeezed it out here in that third and final round. Yeah, man, it was, it was controlled. The positions that needed to be controlled, he was able to get to where he wanted it and controlled it there. So I definitely believe that was a win on his behalf. We do have some more, ladies and gentlemen. This is a five rounder. I apologize. Oh, it's a five rounder. We are not done. 
Oh, wow. Well, that kind of changes everything. Changes yeah. everything. <laughs> We're still at 65-35, and look, look. Uh, Vansel's up, but he is breathing heavy in that corner, guys. You can see a lot of that in the beginning of the third round. you got to wonder where this is going to go if it does go into the deep waters of the fourth and fifth rounds. My bad, we start the fourth round. Hey, that, that, hey, that shows better, why right? he was smiling. Yeah. <laughs> he knew. This is going to be a real test of the gas tank. Big left hook from Maters. Maters starting out a little quicker than the other rounds. Must have something still left in there. Oh, yeah. Art Vansel definitely taking his time. Seems a little fatigued, but you never know. Could be playing a little possum. Never know with these heavyweights, man. The white starting to let his hands go a little Ooh. more. Okay, big right. he Ball. needs to follow up with that. My gosh, he stunned him. Seems he's playing possum. He was playing possum earlier in rounds. And now he's starting to let his hands go a little more. Vance will find it obviously very difficult to defend those shots coming from the big man. Hey, I imagine he's going to be looking for a takedown very soon. I know he has to pace himself here in these final couple rounds, but man, he's finding success with those hands. He needs to jump on them. Another huge clean right just landed. Absolutely, and another one. Dwight's corner. Dwight's got him on the run now. Yeah, Dwight's corner imploring him to stay on him. But I, I, I understand that patience, man. He knows that his opponent is going to shoot for a takedown anytime. And uh, he's fighting smart. He's fighting really smart. Yeah, absolutely. He's putting those shots together pretty well here in this third, or fourth and final round. Fourth round, not final. Fourth round, yeah. He can't waste any more time. It's so close. This is the time where he's got to jump on him. For any judges who might be on the fence, he needs to put it on him. He's doing a good job here in this fourth round. He's doing way better. Makes you wonder if, like you said, if he was if he was playing possum and not yeah. there. I don't know if Marty has any more gas to do the takedown and keep him down like he had. Looks like now Maters is finding his home on his feet. Ooh, good feint teep, Joe. Yes. Overhand right. That's nice. Got him curled up. Nice good knees. Good knees. Good knees to the body. Got him up against the cage right in front of us. I don't know if tying up was the best idea. He's slipping right here in front of the cage where they spilled a little bit of water between this round there. Getting a couple pot shots off. If I was the white, I'd break away where I was being successful. Without a doubt. If it ain't broke, don't break it. Exactly. Both Marty are just swinging. swinging now. They're swinging now. Tying up here in the building. Up. May have yes. made him a little more tired than he needed to be. This fight could be 2-2 two -two right now, guys. It no, absolutely it could it. be, Very without well. a doubt. Very without well. a doubt. Championship rounds here. Like you guys said, Mater just has to stay on the outside. He was dominating that round until he charged in, and then really the dirty boxing took hold on the cage. And Vansel was really able to turn it around with some big shots there. I still have the round for Maters. Uh, thinking it's three rounds uh, to one Vansel, but it could very well be it's two to two. Definitely close. I'll be anxious to see it's who close. has the endurance to come out here and impose their will in this final round. Van uh, Maters has got to stay outside. He, he was finding so he much success outside success there. there. You know, early in the round, I feel like he was setting up what he's doing now. Yes. He popping the jab, and he was doing well. Um, and he did well by making Marty tired. Now, Marty's tired. I don't think he should tie up. I feel like tying up is where where Mater, or Marty excels, and he's able to make the fight his. So I think the White should keep keep it on the outside and keep yes. fighting the way he is. And, and Without a doubt. He can walk away with the W tonight. But at the same time, if he's down three to one, he does need that finish, and that's yeah, very he, possible yeah. also, gentlemen. Yes, definitely, sir. Definitely. I don't know if Marty has the juice to do the takedowns he was doing in that first couple rounds. We shall see as shall we close see. it out. It's a great matchup here. Hey, the big boys bringing it. Cage aggression does. It's a great matchup. All right, last round, gentlemen. Last round. Back up, boy. Back up. 
You ready? You ready? Here we go. Referee calls getting the action. Round five. Squaring off in the middle of the cage. Hard now. He waited. He shot. Let's see it. Let, oh, gets it. Gets it down to the ground. Let's see if he can get, finish it. Got to get to his feet. Yeah, he's got it. There he goes. Make him work for it. White making him work way more than he did in the earlier rounds. He's got to get that separation and get his hands back on. Marty's putting a lot, exerting a lot of energy into taking him down right now. Uh, a lot of times it's a lot harder to take somebody down than to defend. Especially that fifth round. <laughs> yeah, man. And these bigger guys, you're holding up that weight. You're trying to get him to the ground. It's, it's a lot harder. Yeah, and Marty's a big guy to be trying to control him up against the cage like that. That's going to take a lot out of him. Definitely. Nice little yeah, no box in here. His coach is no clinching. He's got to push away and separate. Jeez. But if you feel the fight, if you feel your fighter breaking, you feel it more than your of coach course, do. So without you know. A you know. Mansell switching position. Now got Maders up against the cage. Yeah, he has to finish it. So honestly, I think his coaches have the right, have the right game plan here, breaking away and making the fight where he's comfortable. Because now, as you see now, Marty's starting to go for the single leg, and now he's on top. He's got it. Yeah, arm behind the back, and that is a terrible position, especially for heavier weights, because you got to get your arm out with his weight and yours. There's that arm triangle once again. Ooh, that's going to be hard to get out of. Late rounds. It's a tough one. He has to separate a little bit and turn counterclockwise or clockwise, doesn't he? Marty needs to get his leg out, and he needs to go to the side uh, side control so he can finish that. But heavier weights, they got a little more muscle, a little more weight there, so it's a little easier to finish that. He's got it tight in there. I don't know if he's... He's still kicking. The White's been in there with a lot of tough guys, though, so let's see if he's used to being in this position. Now. Tapped oh, him out. Tapped him out from a position that's not normally finished in. Hey, hey that's some heavyweights, man. That's, that's right. Strength. Arm that's triangle. Strength. Marty Vanzel pulls it out in the final round. Very impressive effort by both fighters. Hey, Nothing to be ashamed of. Both that was an amazing fight. Yeah, left it all in the cage there. Back and forth. Marty was able to capitalize on the ground game. Marty was, Marty was doing well, man. He did really good. That was a very close one. Very close one down to the very end. Yes, it was. Well, he finished it with that move that he was going to several times during yes. the fight. Yes. And like you said, he never got that full position where he was really able to crank it. But during the end of a heavyweight fight, you can't be that surprised at the outcome. No, no. It reminds me of uh, Shane Carwin emptied his tank and then Brock Lesnar got him that got second him. round with yeah, that arm that's triangle. That's exactly what, that's a perfect example. <laughs> hey, but uh, if, if uh, du uh, Dwight would have listened to his corner, it might have been a little different. Getting that separation, man. He wasn't finding success tying up with him. Bob just came up and said something to me, man. But I've been, I've been hyping him up the whole night, man. I know he's a great coach, man, so... Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Bruce Allen, has called a stop to this contest at 2 minutes, 17 seconds into round 5, declaring your winner by submission due to arm triangle and new cage aggression amateur heavyweight champion, Marty Vansel! All right, here we are with your new cage aggression amateur heavyweight champion, Marty Vansel. Marty, long, tough road getting to this point and a lot of tough, tough opponents. How does it feel now walking out of here with that cage aggression heavyweight championship? Oh, it feels amazing. I'm just glad to be here again and actually bring it home. So, Now, very, very interesting fight, very entertaining. You know, both of you guys at different moments in the fight were taking it to each other. Early on in the fight, looked like you were really close to putting him away with some heavy punches there and uh, ended up surviving. End up turning it around with a big submission win. What was the game plan coming into tonight? Uh, the game plan was to punch and 
make an entryway to get him down, and I was just trying to get that done every round, and some rounds I couldn't get it. You know, kind of tough to do the scouting and do a lot of homework on opponents, especially being so far away. What surprised you about this bite, about this bout from Dwight tonight? Uh, I mean, the height and reach difference was tough, and I knew he was going to have a little bit of power, so I was just trying to dodge a lot of those punches. Well, it was definitely a very convincing and, like I said, entertaining performance. Martin, I wanted to ask you real quick anything you want to mention or anybody that you want to thank before I let you get to the celebration. Uh, I'd just like to thank my coaches and all my teammates for being there and getting me better and always pushing me to my max. So just thank my teammates, really. Well, you can definitely tell all the hard work's been paying off. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for your winner and new caged aggression amateur heavyweight champion, Marty Vansel. All right, fight fans, we're gonna take a brief 10 minute intermission. When we come back, we'll have our main card and our always popular female bout. That's all coming up right after this intermission. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are at halftime of night number one, caged aggression, determination. As we said, that's exactly what it's taken to put these fights on tonight. And they've done what they've always done, never disappoint. Three of our first five fights ended in a first round knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, we are bringing the pain here tonight. And as always, we got our stellar broadcast team here. Eric Shelton joining us this evening, and then joining us as well from Mixed Martial Mindset, Jason Burmans, gentlemen. Wow, what have we seen so far? Hey man, the card's always stacked with cage aggression, man. The, the matchmaker always does a great job, stellar job, matching these fighters up. The first two fights, as you said, knockouts this time. Three, fight. three of the three. fights. You're right, you're right, three. But the heavyweight fight just happened, man, was balls of the ball, man, and they did a great job putting on a performance, man. So, hey, you got nothing but more performances looking up in the second half of this night. And that's where we're really, I mean, the fights are great for whether it's amateur or the pros. After the intermission, they will continue to bring the pain. Burmis, this is your first night with us tonight. What have you seen so far? Big fights, big finishes. You know, I was lucky enough to um, attend the last event, the back-to-back -back event, and said, man, this caged aggression is great. As you, know, as you know, I moved here from New York, looking for a little bit more freedom, looking for great events. Packed house tonight, despite everything that's going on and I was actually lucky enough to talk to some of the great fighters that are on this card tonight and tomorrow earlier. It's a beautiful thing like last fight we had another person from Jackson Wink camp tonight we just saw one of the heavyweights from Jackson Wink Eileen Villalobos coming up one of the female fighters coming up and we're not even beginning to stop ladies and gentlemen because we have what is it six more five more fights a co-main and a main event you're a little bit familiar with some of our cats in the co-main in the main breakdown yeah. uh, Bobby Downs and Zach Otto, or Otto, if you don't Zach mind. Zach Otto. So we got Bobby Downs. I used to train with him coming up in the game. Uh, he's not no stranger to the cage and cage aggression. Uh, he's a stud, man. His name, Wild Boy, he lives up to it every fight. This fight, he's fighting a guy who the overhand right is something that he lands often. He, he finishes fights that way. So let's see if, if Bobby can make the fight, his fight, and stay in range as he should. Because if he, if he ties up with this guy... You can, you can, it could be an early night. You never know. But Zach Otto, now going into the main event, we have Zach Otto. I don't know much about his, his opponent, but Zach Otto was a stud UFC vet, as you said. But before he got to the UFC, he was on this stage. So he's more comfortable here. Let's see if he can go in here and he can, uh, and he can make his, this fight his because he's great on the ground. He's a great striker. I, I believe his wrestling is his best asset. That's what Cage Aggression does, ladies and gentlemen. We not only have Bellator veterans, LFA veterans, UFC veterans, this is also a platform for fighters to go level. And he is a perfect testimony to that. He, uh, featherweight champion? Flyweight, baby. Flyweight champion, Flyweight, my I bad. know. Featherweight makes me feel good, man. No, that's all right. Flyweight champion that through that victory took him to the ultimate fighter. Jason, you're a little bit familiar with our main event, Otto, as well. Tell us, give us your thoughts on him. Well, I'm excited. You know, he's the Viking. And, uh, 
You know, we went four and four in the UFC, tough, fought some tough guys, uh, took an L from uh, Sage Northcutt and Moreno. But after talking to him yesterday, I expect him to come out here, come out big, and look for that KO. But Clarence Jordan doesn't look like any chump. And uh, talking to him, he's looking for the finish too. So I don't think we could have had a better main event here at Cage DeGrasse. That's how we do. Mike Goodwin, testament to him. Infinite thanks once again. He went to war for not only himself, his promotion, but his fighters, and of course the fans. This is just night number one, and we're halfway home. We have five more bangers in the pro division coming, and we also have tomorrow night, where we will be joined by the Croatian sensation, Pat Militich. CagedAggression.tv is where you can find it, ladies and gentlemen. This is our final event of the year. Again, Mike Goodwin went through so much over these last several months, but especially this week. And again, I can't say it enough. Thank you, sir. So many of us thank you. Your fighters, your fans. Again, pay attention. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We have only just begun. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Uh, Jason Burmis here from the Caged Aggression weigh-ins, and we are with Bobby Downs. Bobby, how are you this afternoon? I'm doing good. Tell us, how was it making weight and then finding out maybe you weren't going to fight, now, of course, you are going to fight? Has that factored in? Uh, no, I, I just stayed ready, just kept doing my thing, uh, stayed on weight, kept a good mind state the whole, uh, the whole fight camp. Uh, started out about seven weeks ago, so the weight cut wasn't too bad. I had some bad ones before, but this one was went pretty smooth. So what are you planning on uh, doing in there this weekend? Um, I'm fighting a, uh, a, sm a sh shorter, stockier guy. Um, I know he's a boxer. He's packing a lot of power. Um, it's going to stay long. Uh, keep my distance. Uh, yeah, and, uh, just, just outstrike him and then uh, drag him into deep waters and drown his ass. So we're looking second, third round finish. Is that what you're telling us? Uh, in first or second. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what opportunities he, he leaves me, what mistakes he makes, but it will be a finish. Yep. All right, Bobby. You got anything else to say to the audience before the big fight? Um, this is my first uh, fight where I've actually had a nice fight camp and uh, strength and conditioning and all that, all the other uh, fights, my other 27 fights I had, including my amateur career, I never had a fight camp. So you're going to see a new wild boy in there uh, tonight and uh, way more effective, way more lethal, way more dangerous. Um, I want to give a shout out to all my people that are back in Peoria, Peoria Muay Thai and everybody there. Thank you for everything you've done for me, Coach Blackerby, uh, Joe Whalen, Nate Gasson. Appreciate all the work you guys put in to help me get ready for this fight. And uh, it's showtime, baby. Let's go. I am with Gabriel Moda. He's got a big fight coming up this weekend at Caged Aggression. Why don't you tell us uh, about the weight cut? Obviously, didn't go your way. Yeah, man. Um, honestly, bro, I'm just I'm just looking forward to the fight tomorrow. That's it. You know, I drove three hours for this. You know, this year has been shitty for everybody. You know, I faced a lot of a lot of things just to get just to, to this point, man. You know, so it's all said and done. I'm just here to fight, man. You know? And what are you looking to do tomorrow? Uh, just put on a fight, man. You know, I, ever since I've started fighting, I've never put on a boring fight. You know what I mean? Obviously, I'm not the hometown favorite, so it, it's all good. I got my fans coming, but I got faith in myself, man. I know what I'm capable of. So are we looking for a finish tomorrow? Is that what you're telling me right now? Um, you know what, man? He, he comes out swinging, I come out swinging. So, I mean, put two and two together, you know, somebody's got to go to sleep. So there you go. You're looking for a banger at Caged Aggression tomorrow. This is it. Okay, we are with Clarence Jordan. Tell us, how'd the weight cut go on this one? Easy. It's a breeze. So what are you planning on doing in there tomorrow? Well, just going to go in there and, you know, take what he gives me. And uh, I'm going to move forward the whole time and attack. So what do you think about your opponent? What are the strong points? Where do you think you can really have the advantage? I think my advantage is going to be on the feet, so that's what I plan on doing is just stalking him down and, you know, whatever he tries to throw at me, whatever crazy stuff he comes back with, I'm just be ready for it. So are we looking for a first, second round finish? Is that what you're telling me? No deep waters here? No deep waters. I'm looking for the TKO, KO, whatever comes first. If a, if a sub pops up, I'll take the sub too. So uh, Clarence, is, uh, is this it for cage aggression? Are you trying to take the belt here? You? you do you just calm down a little bit let's go we'll, we'll win this fight and then maybe talk to me afterward about all that so one fight at a time anything else for the audience just uh 
Yeah, have fun, guys. Have fun. We are with MMA veteran Zach Otto. You got a big fight coming up for Cage Aggression. Why don't you tell us about it? Uh, yeah, uh, I fought for Cage Aggression a long time ago, so bringing it back here and moving back up to my original weight class at 185. Um, been a little while since I fought on the regional scene, but I'm excited to put on a great performance for Cage Aggression. Yeah, we're excited for you. Now, a little bit of problems with the weight cut, not too much. Just had to cut a little under a pound right beforehand. You think that's going to affect you at all? No, it was mostly just because we got a flat tire on the way here, and all of a sudden my window of cutting weight went from like four hours nice and easy to like an hour. So we just rolled into town. I tried to cut the weight real quick. I, on our scale, I was on weight, so I was like, oh, okay, cool, let's head over to the venue. And then it just so happens that the scale was like 0.4 off from our scale, so... I just, you know, ran some stairs a little bit, came right off. It really wasn't a bad weight cut or anything. Yeah, you seriously look great. What's the game plan in there tomorrow? Are you going in there? Are you going to bang? Are you going to take him down? Are you getting a KO? Are we getting a sub? What's the deal? Uh, I was known for my, my finishes on the regional level, so I'd like to get back to that. Um, I just, I don't plan anything. You know, I go in there and just move and react, and it all kind of takes care of itself. All right, Zach, anything else to say to the audience? Um, enjoy the show. It's going to be fucking fireworks so let's do it we're looking forward to it thank you very much my friend Gentlemen, welcome back to the main portion of tonight's car. I hope you guys are all enjoying yourselves. Don't forget, we've got a whole entire another action-packed set coming up here tonight, including our always popular all-female bout. And of course, don't forget, night two going down right here tomorrow night after the lights go out here tonight. That's night two going down tomorrow night. Don't forget, a few seats are still available, so don't miss out on all the action for night two. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Eileen Villalobos. 
going up against Peyton Olnicek. Hold on, Olnicek. Pardon me if I'm mastering that name. Hold on, hold on, Nicek. Fighting out of resurgence, MMA, Vanderlei, BJJ. But right here we have Aylin Villalobos fighting out of Jackson Wink, MMA. Yet another one fighting out of one of the most elite gyms in the world. Hey man, she has a lot of hype behind her, man. She has a lot of hype. Without a doubt, one of the people she looks up to coming from Waxen, Jackson Wink. She has a few fighter, a few female teammates that she looks up to, including, of course, Holly Holm, who dethroned Ronda Rousey those few years ago in Australia. Says her dad encouraged her and got motivated to start MMA. A little pop motivation there. She realizes her opponent has a strong ground game, and she realizes she just came off a KO. So Peyton's going to be feeling herself a little bit. Eileen feels she is very well-rounded. Feels it's been a wild ride. She has learned to trust in the process and to enjoy the ride. Very wise for a young lady. It's not about the destination, it's the journey. Saw her up against Claire Schneckloth picking up the W last November during Kay's aggression, aggression battle tested. She has the skills. Coming I'm out excited of to see what she comes with, man. There's been a lot of hype even on Facebook. Every every media that I've seen her name on, it's been a lot of hype behind her. So let's see if she lives up to it. Burmis, what's that poll looking like? You know, it's almost dead even with uh, Via Lobos just coming out a wee bit on top with 53 to 46 percent. But I got to tell you guys, talking to her yesterday, she seemed cool, calm, collected, and ready to step in here and take care of business. And we all know Jackson Wink is one of the premier camps in MMA. Without a doubt. John Jones, Holly Holm, some of the best absolutely in the game. One considered possibly the greatest of all time. We have Peyton Oldie check. Hold out, only check. Hold lot D check. It's gonna break it down phonetically. Father did jujitsu when she was a child and always wanted to get into it growing up, but always was into other sports. So she's clearly an athlete. Thinks he's thinks it's a great matchup. Expects a lot of action and a tough, a scrappy match. I'm ready to go wherever this fight goes. She's a gamer. Feels the Jew. The jujitsu is definitely where her strengths tend to show most often. But her last fight showed my striking can be just as dangerous as she did pick up a first round KO. Well rounded, so it sounds. Oh, yeah. Looks up to many female fighters, obviously, in today's UFC roster, including Holly Holm, Valencia, and Michelle Waterson. Hey, Michelle's a good person to look up to, man. That's a stud right there. Yeah, it seems like all these guys have a good idea of, you know, who to be looking up to. How can he be great unless you study greatness? I say again. Her first two amateur fights were against top three pound for pound amateur women of Wisconsin. So she's been cutting her teeth on some on some good talent there as she makes her way into the ring. The cage rather. I apologize. Wash my mouth out. Hey, it's a ring, it's just a different type of ring. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is scheduled for three three-minute rounds in the Cage Digression Amateur Women's Bantamweight Division, powered by Yabba Dabba's House of Glass. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. She stands five feet, seven inches tall, and weighed in at 125 pounds. She trains at Jackson Wink MMA and is sponsored by Tortoise Chacon, Bloom Hemp CBD, Elite Orthopedics Therapy, Vital Performance, K&A Customs, Balanced Chiropractic, Affordable Auto Care, and Alien Boy Boxing. Joining us from Albuquerque, New Mexico, Eileen Lorena de Mexico Villalobos. And her opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. She stands five feet, six inches tall, and weighed in at 134 pounds. She trains at Resurgence MMA and Vanderlei Jiu-Jitsu. Joining us from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Peyton Olenicek. Peyton Olenicek going up against Island La Reina de Mexico, Villalobos. The ladies are scrapping too tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You ready? Fight. What's our polls looking like, Burmis? We got Via Lobos pulling ahead a little bit with 55 to about 44 percent. Really excited to get this one going, fellas. Evenly matched. They come in scrapping, throwing low leg kicks and some upper strikes. 
Whoa, Ooh, nice good tee. <laughs> Woo, perfect timing on the tee. She's looking for the leg lock here, ankle lock here. Oh, wow, nicely done. She said she was a ground specialist. Uh, she has to turn into her and take and go to the back here. Exactly there she what goes. she just did. Nice. Move, there she goes, then straight now. into side control. Nice. And she did that very effortlessly, fellas. She yeah. didn't look like she was worried at all, immediately did the right thing, and now is in full control with side mount. You can attest that to their coaches, putting her in those yes. positions. She's getting positioned. That's good. She's controlling the position against a good jiu-jitsu specialist, so that's tough to do. Coach calling for the Americana, the Kimura. Don't give her your arm. Don't give her your arm. Clearly Peyton opened up with a little bit of ground game, ground game going for that ankle lock. Peyton needs to be looking for her getting her guard back, but she seems to be doing rubber guard for side control, which is not really something you want to be looking for in this position. But she might have a trick up her sleeve. She doesn't claim it on her paperwork, but Peyton is rocking her blue sports trousers. She's looking to get her guard back, gets her guard back really smooth. Oh, the guard there. Exactly. You don't different. see that rubber guard outside of a triangle yes. position very often, guys. And she did utilize that to get the good movement, and now looking like she's got working a high on a triangle. guard here, Which looking for arm bar or a triangle. She's setting up something real nice. Put on the hips. Yeah, Peyton with a nice ground game here in the first Stop. round. Come on. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. I think it like she was working it. Peyton was working it. Yeah. Interesting uh, stand up there from the ref. Which is what it is. Here we are. Showing heavy strikes here. Absolutely. Going for a nice judo toss here. Looks like Peyton is. Eileen, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I think Eileen took a second guess when she felt her on the ground. I think she kind of wants to keep it standing. Her striking seems to be elite. Back to the back. Nice. Got back. that hook in very slickly. Yeah. Going for that second one. Yes. Go for broke. 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 Heavy strikes here. Eileen's got to make a move here. The Eileen's sneaking out to the... Whoa, Ooh, stayed by the over. bell. Woo. Zach Morris in the building. Nice work, though. Good work from both ladies. Absolutely. Here. Both of them showing some technique. Yeah, I don't know Clearly who you well give trained. that. I don't know who you give that round to. That's man. a tough one. It's almost dead even on the poles, but if I had to... If I had to decide, I'd probably go give it to Olin Echek. You know, those uh, submission attempts, they look very slick. She never looked like she was in trouble, whereas Villa Lobos, you know, there was a couple yeah. moments there where she wasn't looking the best, especially at the end of that round, face down. If you give her another 30 seconds, that fight might be finished. Quite That's possible. She true, was taking some true. serious shots there at the end. Yeah, Peyton's, Peyton's ground game is clearly strong. Looking at Olin check in the uh, corner. She's looking like she's very focused and ready to come out there. She's kind of left that round with her hands up. Hey, that's, a, that's a good sign. She's excited. She's ready to get in here and do it. Not breathing heavy at all. Looks extremely calm. Very excited about this second round, fellas. You ready? Right. Well, the poles are reflecting exactly how this is playing out. Very evenly matched so far. Let me start round two. Off center. Off center. Mia Loeb has had some success with that front kick in the first round. I'd like to see her use that a little bit more, just like that. Just like the distance. Yes. Yep. She's mixing it up, too. She's throwing side kicks. You know, it's, it's good. It's a good setup for what she's trying to do. Ooh, attempted a spinning back because they just missed. Peyton. Body shot there. Switching levels. Going high, going low, like Brenda said. Throwing a variety of kicks. She throws that pretty slick, man. That's hard to throw as fast as she's throwing it. 
I think she's being real hesitant with this ground game, you know, from the first round. I think she, she could get these takedowns and she's avoiding them because she felt the way that girl's guard felt, and I think she's avoiding it. I think she'd be smart to avoid it because I think that Villalobos does have the uh, advantage on the striking. And right now, she wants to get away from that cage and get as much distance as possible. But uh, Olin Edchek, I see her right now working her for that takedown. You can see it happening, fellas. Alien got doing a good job with the underhook, controlling her arm in the overhook. She's doing good here. You're fine, keep the underhook. Yeah. One minute, 15 seconds left in the second round. Caitlin only check. Oh, now she's good. I think she'll finish it oh, here. She's she got both underhooks. Big take down, down you got it. Down. Let's see if she can do something with it as we close out the final minute of the second round. Now ring down, let's go. Let's finish it here. Keep going, Peyton. Work, work, don't get out of position. Firing away. Don't get out of position. Two on one. Two on one. Two on one. Two on one. Oh, yeah. doing good at controlling, so she's not taking too much damage here. Controlling her hands, blocking her face. She's not taking too much damage. 30 seconds left here, ladies and gentlemen. Peyton having great control here. And is that something? Ooh, nice shots. Under the armpit. Those are the hardest ones. You don't expect those. And clearly nothing too incredible, incredibly explosive, but the judges are looking at this kind of control. Oh, yeah. The referee about to call the end to the second round. Very close match, but it looks like Peyton is definitely controlling the place where this fight goes. Hey, they're fighting to the bell, man. Hey, these ladies are bringing it. High level jujitsu, high level striking. This is without a doubt. Clearly, technique. Technique, technique. If I'm Bia Lobos' coach, I'm telling her she might need the finish, and she wants to keep that distance in this round. She doesn't have a lot, to, a lot of time to work. This is the final round, and again, she's she's looked dominant with the striking, but as soon as that distance is closed and she's pushed up against the cage, you can see there's a definite uh, advantage for Olenchek. Yeah, she, she ties up, and it seems like she wants to go for a takedown, and she wants to, you know, make something happen, but I think her mind is telling her, don't go there, you know, and she's holding back, which in the moment when you're fighting a fighter that's a jiu-jitsu fighter, those are those seconds that matter the most, where you, those those seconds matter the most again, man, and she's and she's losing those, those uh, scrambles and those uh, transitions and those positions, and that's what she has to focus on keeping it standing, not allowing this girl to tie up and keeping the strikes coming. Her those teeks coming, yeah. yeah they're the doing great with those and follow up with some combos. That's right. Yeah. We shall see as we move into this third round. Very close to the match fight so far, I have to say. Going off in the middle, both of those kicks. Those kicks, keep those hands up. Set your own kicks up off your punches. Be able to compose that distance. offense as we move into this third round here. Yep. Both ladies very aware of each other's weapons. Nice yeah. 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 high kick. She definitely has it. She caught it. Would have been a nice follow up. Good drive. Listen to our coaches here. Ooh, got the takedown. Back in the place, Eileen Villalobos does not want to be right now. In half guard, this is this is exactly where Peyton wants to be. This is her this is her world here. Let her head up so you can get that under. You can sweep her right there. There you go. Bridge it over. Put your foot out, Peyton, to block that. Eileen can and sweep her, but when you're facing a high-level jiu-jitsu fighter, it's hard to do. It's very hard. They're defending that. And she's breathing with that mouth open. You can tell this is the third round. She's a little, little bit more spent, so all that energy is going to be tough. 
Uh, she hasn't really been able to get up off the ground when in this position. So if she's able to keep this control for another 90 seconds or so, this could be a wrap for Olenich. Truth be told, right now she's holding herself to the ground, holding that holding Peyton's head down. Right now she needs to be letting the head go and looking for the underhook to come up. Without a doubt. Clock's ticking away. Let's see if Peyton can take advantage of this position. Get your head out of here. Get that one your head out of here. Push on her arm. Yeah. Body getting under her Top position. Left hand under her that hand free and maybe start raining down some blows. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see her step over and try to get full mount, but especially right now. It doesn't oh, yeah. seem like that's what she wants. I think she knows she's on top right now and she's trying to kind of trying to milk the clock. Well, she's, Eileen's been doing good at not letting Peyton create that distance so she can't start. She has. She snuck the butterfly in here. And she's uh, she's trying to get it, but it might be a little too late. Tried to step over right there. Didn't seem to just add there. She is. She got it right there. Still in that guard a little bit. Got that hook. Or the she's got a little, bit of, with a, that little bit of a butterfly guard. A little bit of a butterfly guard. But this late in the fight, it's kind of hard to have that strength to make that butterfly guard work. That's why for military fighting, it's always talked about endurance and stamina. So in these final rounds, you can still implement your technique. That's always been my bread and butter is that cardio. Absolutely. I can attest that to military fighting system. The bread of beast. Yeah, they had a couple champions come out of there. <laughs> yeah, I heard they're pretty good, that team. Yeah, hey, you know. I had to watch that kick on watch the ground. Kicks, yeah. yeah. Almost hit her in the face. Wow. You know, it didn't seem like that was on purpose, but you get in that position. Both I mean, I think it's a pretty, pretty clear victory for How'd Peyton. That? How'd our margins move in the, during the poll, my friend? You know, surprisingly, it went to 50-50 throughout the whole thing. So um, wow. at the very end, we had actually had Villalobos come out 51 and change uh, against 48 and change. But I, I would think it would be a robbery if Peyton doesn't take this double. Oh, no, absolutely. Very close, but yeah, that was... Uh, you don't see too many robberies in cage aggression. We got a lot of great judges. A lot of everything goes pretty by the book here, man. They do great job with that type of stuff. So uh. neither lady, regardless of the victor, has nothing to be ashamed of. That was an incredible effort by both of them. I'd like to see Peyton work a little bit more on the striking. You know, that leg kick was probably the highlight of striking for her. She seems to have a great ground game and a tough chin. When she was closing the distance, she took a couple on the uh, on the chin and yeah. just kept moving forward. So really exciting fighters here. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Ground game was super tight, but yeah, you gotta be the, the total package, man. Yeah, you, you gotta have, have the hands to match the ground. I'd like to see Aileen work on her defensive takedowns and working to get up, you know, more because She's got great strike, and you can see that. She didn't get to put it on display tonight because her opponent was doing a great job of, of jamming her up and, and putting her on the cage, taking her down. So it was hard to see her, you know, her full evolution. But, you know, that's how it goes in this game, man. Grappler versus striker, and she imposed her will, I believe. Sometimes you just run into those concrete chins, man. Yeah, and it just changes the game. It definitely does. Styles make fights, they say. Yeah. That's the rumor. Hey. I hear that. I hear that. I hear we got a great matchmaker, too, so. Every time. <laughs> I, it's interesting you say that, because as a huge fight fan, I've never seen a, a robbery here when it goes to the judges. It's always clean. Dude, I'm hometown, man. I've lost my title here again in a decision, so that's not something you have to worry about in case of aggression. That's awesome. Final particulars from Jason Vargas. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to your judges' scorecard for our decision. Our judges scored this contest 30, 27, 29, 28, and 30, 27, declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Peyton Olenicek. Come on over here, Peyton. All right, here we are with your winner, Peyton Olenicek. Peyton, you're, on a, you're in a hurry there to get the celebration started, but we got to have a, have a conversation after that tough victory. How's it feel getting a big win, stepping into the camera cage for your first time? 
Uh, it feels great. I, I didn't know if I was going to fight after my February fight, and so all the things to Mike and everyone to put this production on, and we are all in the back, we're all so thankful. So just really excited to have an opportunity to fight and to come out on the other side against a really, really good opponent. Just couldn't ask for anything else. Now, your, your opponent had mentioned that she wanted to come in and really put your ground game to the test. Uh, looked like that took place a little bit. What kind of surprises, uh, you know, kind of caught you off guard during the bout? Yeah, I, I know she has a lot of kickboxing bouts. I know um, she's, you know, really reputable in jujitsu as well. So I really expected the fight to go everywhere, to be honest. I was really ready. We train everything every week, and so I, I feel like I'm really ready no matter where the fight goes against any opponent, and I think this was a really good fight to show a little bit of everything. I, I can't argue with anything there, and I think you convinced a lot of people of that here tonight, too. Anything you want to mention or anyone that you want to thank before I let you get to that celebration? Oh, man, the list could be long and long, but I guess thank you, too, again, Mike and everyone for putting this promotion on. We are just so thankful to be here today, and I know it was on and off and on and off. So, yes, thank you. Huge round of applause for Mike and everybody. Um, and then just, you know, everybody at the gym. Our gym is great. The coaches are amazing. Our professor for jiu-jitsu is amazing, Daniel Vanderlei, and everyone at the gym and family and friends. I mean, we get here because of all of you and because all of you came and, and bought the ticket and came to watch and bought the pay-per-view. And we like putting a show on for you. So thank you, everyone, for making this possible. Well, thank you, Peyton. And let's have a big round of applause one more time for your winner tonight, Peyton Olenicek. November, and it was a testament to this man's heart because his mother had just passed away and he still fulfilled his commitment came in and put on a great performance hey man these guys are our former teammates they actually separated gyms to make this fight happen so uh, you know they both know their each other's skills and uh, you know it, it's gonna be a tough fight to call I mean for the coach you know and, and everybody involved so Let's see what these guys got to bring to the table. That's a tough one. Reminds me of when Rashad Evans fought uh, John Jones John back Jones. in the day. Caused a big breakup in the camp. Yeah, man. That'll do it. Tyler DeHaven fighting out of Marty's Martial Arts in Rock Island. Wrestled his whole life. And he saw it on TV and wanted to emulate it like we hear many times. Hooked him just from watching TV. Looking forward to a very fun, exciting, high-paced fight. He feels his wrestling skills are going to be the deciding factor in his matchup against Lee Colvin. I've trained with the kid, man. His wrestling is, is, is high level, definitely high level. So uh, I'm not sure, man. I know Lee is an athlete. This guy's an athlete. They both, you know, they both bring it to the fights. You know, they both fight like champions. So Having that teammate factor, being so used to people's nuances and subtleties of their fight game, that's something you can't really quantify. Hey, man, they're both willing to take the fight, so they know something about each other, yeah, you know? Yeah, for sure. Well, I discussed that very thing with Lee yesterday, and he said, look, man, we're at the point in our careers where one, two months of training can make all the difference. You're in there against a different fighter almost every few months. So, yeah, I've sparred with this guy, and, yeah, I've taken the mental notes, but the bottom line is I've got to perform tomorrow, and he can come up with something big. So Absolutely. I was really excited to hear that. You know, they, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of bad blood, but they didn't want to be around each other. Oh, yeah. I mean, you coming from fight camps, is that something that you're concerned with? I mean, look, I did the Ultimate Fighter, man. I fought a guy that was sleeping under me, so it's not something I really focus on. You know, I understand this is a, this is a game where it, you know, you got to go tooth and nail with people you know. You know, it's, it's just 
it's just part of it, man. And it's it's something you gotta overcome. It's something you gotta realize, man. You're out here to feed your family or whatever the case may be. It's you and him in the cage. That's it. Yeah, once it's fight night, the friendship goes inside. Exactly. We'll see if either of them will be able to pick up on any tendencies, though. Lee Colvin fighting out of Summit Training Center, living here in Rock Island, Illinois. Started MMA from an invitation from a friend of his. Got himself hooked. He thinks it'll be a great matchup against a great opponent. Clearly showing respect for his teammate. Like many of these fighters, they feel they're very well-rounded and prepared to go wherever it goes but he thinks he has the advantage in the form of striking. He also mentions that the Haven is a teammate of his. Clearly some respect between the two, but like you said, boys, once that cage door closes. Hey, that's what it is, man. It's just them two in there, man. Take and all that, business. look, uh, Ty was real pumped up right now, man. He's pacing like a pit bull, man. And you wouldn't know they were friends ever at this point. Very interesting how the fight can bring that out of people, man. <laughs> hey, it happens, You man. see it, absolutely. Back in the day, Simon Brown and Maurice Blocker in the boxing in the boxing ring. That's oh, a little yeah. old school there. <laughs> Sometimes those bring the best fights, man, when Without they have history. Doubt. Without a doubt. Lee Coleman making his way into the cage, like you said. Tyler DeHaven anxiously anticipating his opponent. It's going to be a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening is scheduled for five three-minute rounds for the Caged Aggression Amateur Bantamweight Championship. Powered by Knockout Barbers. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall and weighed in at 136 pounds. He trains at Marty's Martial Arts and is sponsored by Unley Marine, AJ Trucking, Quad City Safety, Grease Monkey Bar and Grill, Jackson Auto Body, Walking Window Tinting, and Green Valley Construction. Joining us from Rock Island, Illinois, Tyler DeHaven. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, nine inches tall, and weighed in at 136 pounds. He trains at Summit Training Center and is sponsored by JJ Memories, Lucas Dangler of Modern Woodman, and Power Your Beast, J&J &J Tax and Accounting Service, Just Aim, Slept Fightwear, Backwater Fitness, 392 Cafe, and Yabba Dabba's House of Glass. Joining us from Rock Island, Illinois, he's your reigning caged aggression amateur bantamweight champion, Lee Mad Dog Colvin! Yes, Ooh, I'm excited Gentlemen, for this. This has a main event feel, man. These yeah, guys know, are ready dude. to go. Jeez. The polls have it Colvin almost two to one with 68 plus percent, but I gotta tell you, it doesn't feel like that hey, way around hey, here, boy. No. Hey, it's an even matchup. That's interesting. Yeah, because I see this quite even. We'll see here in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Lee Colvin, Tyler DeHaven. Can cut it with a knife, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of those fights. Let's go. Here we go, beginning of round one. Whoa, that Both opening up fast. Oh, good knee there. Breaks away. Seems like uh, DeHaven's fighting a little bit more emotionally than Colvin at this point. Yeah, Colvin being real calm here. But he has the title for a reason. Without a doubt. Good head nice movement slip. there. Wow, absolutely. Good head movement there. Tyler's trying to tie up, trying to do his wrestling handle. His, this is the game he wants to do. He wants to tie up, he wants to take him down, and he wants to control him. But is Lee going to allow that? That's the question here. Big knee from DeHaven. Colvin having up against the cage here. Both of them exchanging knees here. Colvin with the old school foot stomp. Yeah. Man up against the cage here, not really working too much. They both know their game, man, so that, that makes it a little more of a chess more than yeah. checkers here, you know? They're, Absolutely. They're both working to, you know, they know what they're looking for. That makes the, the fight a little more complicated. You gotta fight a little more smart, you know? Like we're saying, you know their tendencies. Yeah. 
<laughs> hey, Lee's letting them hands go early. Take that Calming deep down, breath. breathing. There you go. Champ, champ style stuff, and that's good to see. He's throwing those things. They are definitely swinging for the fences here. Well, he one. punched himself out, though, man. Yeah. This is the first of five. I mean, imagine that adrenaline dump fighting your teammate on this platform. Uh, we seen their energy earlier, you know. They'll, they'll, they'll uh, settle into the fight, for sure. Yeah, definitely slowed their pace down a little bit. Definitely. Ooh, Lee's doing good at getting out of the way. Man, again, Lee's doing he is good. slipping those punches. That step back is his thing right now. He's doing great with it. That's the stuff Michael Nunn used to do, just swing at him, he just wouldn't be there. Yeah. Looks like somebody's There's cut Somebody's open. cut. Looks like he's cut behind, behind oh, yeah. the ear. It may be a head cut. It looks like a head it is. cut. It yes. looks like yeah, the right side. from the back. The right occipital parietal portion it's of the brain. A, it's a legal spot. Though. That's some JFK stuff right there. <laughs> Swimming back kick here. Colvin seems to be resetting a lot. Taking a step back, taking yeah. a little bit of a breath. He's still controlling the center, though. He's still... Fighters definitely settling down a bit. With 20 seconds to go, it could be anybody's round right now. On, definitely a close, a without yeah. a doubt. I would, ooh, I would have to say, ooh, they're both these guys, man, they're all over the place. They are scrapping, ladies and gentlemen. Scrapping. Good defense here from without Lee. Without a doubt. Wow. Good defense there. I would assume DeHaven oh, would have a strength advantage, but oh, look at him inching his way up. Didn't even grab the wow. cage. That was that was power there. Without a doubt. Very close. Has the, has the polls closed up? Has the gap closed up anyway, Berman? The gap has closed up to about 60-40 in uh, favor of Colvin, but that could have been anybody's round, really. That's a tough one to call. It was tough, but to me, man, it, it seemed to me Lee was throwing a lot more strikes. He was making stuff happen. Um, uh, uh, Tyler wasn't able to close his distance and make the wrestling. He didn't get a takedown there, so and he wasn't throwing many strikes, so I would definitely have to give it to Lee in that in that round. Well, as a part of that subjective judging, we don't know what they're looking at. Those three yeah. shots that he just, yeah. that head movement where he evaded, that's definitely got to be taken into consideration. Definitely. And the sprawls, man, you know, that's, de defending this uh, shot should be points, you know. For sure. Especially towards the end there, defending that takedown as he had him up against the cage. I would definitely have to give that first round to Lee. Trying some, Try some superstar technique yeah. there, boy. Hey, doing champ stuff. Hey, that's good to see. <laughs> that's what champs do. Haven still pacing. Let's see if he comes out in the second round with that same frenetic energy he came out that first round with. Colvin definitely just chilling patiently. Lee, Lee trying to dig deep here. Let's go, stay with me. Head moving, head moving. Good body kick there from Tyler. Head moving, Absolutely. Head moving. Lee caught it. Come on, get, get the head. Huh. There you go. Come on, yeah. Lee bringing out a beast right now. He bent you a kick. Yeah, that's why he's the champ. Mm -hmm. Head movement, set it up. That's it, come on. Move. He's starting to feel himself a little bit. Let's go. You can imagine they've had Let's rounds go. like this in the gym. I was going to ask, is this another gym <laughs> session we're looking at? Hey, oh, nice big shot connecting from DeHaven. <laughs> Lee slips the second one. Later in these rounds, man, I, I worry about that pullback. Is he going to have the energy to do And he's pulling straight back. Is that a straight. way in that frowned upon to pull straight back? It kind of is. You know, we've seen guys like Anderson Silva fail with that. Absolutely. You know? To taken down in Colvin's guard here in front of us. Not to take anything from Silva. He did that for a lot of years and was successful with it. And he's still doing it, yeah. quite frankly. I'm like, dude, <laughs> when are you going to learn? He's been knocked out. out again, but he did that with uh, Izzy. I'm like, bro. He's a stud, man. He is, man. He's One of the best. One of the best ever. Tyler finally has it in his world. Let's see what he can do here. All been doing a good job of not letting him create that space. He needs to be inching over to, to get his underhook and get up on top because right now, but I'll tell you right now, Tyler has a great top control, man. Once he gets here, it's hard to get him off. Take advantage of it. Ooh, missed that one. Lee looking to get his guard back. Tyler not allowing it. Nice pass. Oh, not a total pass there. Sorry. See, see that? Tyler has great top control, man, and that's why, man, wrestling is such a good, good base to have in this sport. I remember Milicic said if he was to ever form a camp again, it would, be, it would start with D1 wrestlers. Hey, man. 
When I went there, dude, I, I always lost to wrestling, man. Now I feel like that's one of my best things is wrestling and, and grappling transitions. Well, that's, that's, you're obviously fight IQ to fill, fill in the gaps, you know what I mean? That's the whole point. Looks like DeHaven was having a little trouble blinking there with the vision from the blood in the eye. There you go, come on. Are our polls moving, Burmas? They're right around 60-40 uh, still with Colvin, but obviously this looks like a DeHaven round, and uh, if you're correct, then we're going to have it 1-1 going into the third, which is very, very possible. I'd really like to see him try to step over with that right leg. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of action, but he is dominating this he round. He definitely is. He definitely That's that wrestler. That's just it. But again, man, once I, like I said, once he gets on top, it's hard to get this guy off, man. He's, he's a stud, long wrestler, and those type of guys, man, are hard to get off. And this is a five Anita round. Belly five. looking to throw. Ooh. End of the second round. That was good. The Haven blinking, apparently, a little bit of blood in the eye, which, of course, makes it hard to see. It's a close fight, man. Without it, well, I mean, would you expect anything else? I know, man. This is a close one. We, I mean, we see where these guys, both these guys excel at. So, it's, and that's only two rounds, man. So, we got three more exciting rounds to see what these guys can do. Who's going to come out on top when you got a, a wrestler versus striker? We just seen that in the last fight with the ladies. So these guys, let's see, I mean, the champ, you know, he obviously has something to prove tonight. Without a doubt. And especially in that first <laughs> round, he was doing a great job That's defending the takedowns. Uh, he's absolutely, he's on evasive mode tonight. Oh, yeah. I think the key is for Colvin to be able to keep the distance, because obviously he's got to get in there, but not so much in there where he's going to get taken down. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's tough, because you're going to have to bounce yeah. in. One, two, get out. One, Very two, tough. three, Especially get out. That's a wrestler who's looking for that takedown. And he's throwing big overhand rights and proceeding forward. That's always tough to do. You want to see a one, two, maybe get out of there, especially when you got a wrestler that's oh, just yeah. looking to take you down. It's going to be interesting to see where the third round takes place, on the feet or on the ground. Yeah. Well, like you said, Eric, once he gets on you, it's clearly hard to take him off. It's, it's definitely hard, man. Let's go, Tyler. Let's go. Slow it down. Don't Here we shot. go. Round three begins. Touching up. Hands up. Let's get our hand on it. Let's go. Take your time. Attempted a jumping side kick there. Lee's starting to feel himself. He's going to shoot. He doesn't want to stand with you. Being a little more patient, focusing. Inside, outside. I like that body oh, Tyler, kick. Tyler, Tyler trying to bully him to the cage to get where he wants got it. Got an arm. Arm in, looking for the arm, arm in. Looking for the arm in choke get here. Get Tyler's got to get that arm back. He's, He's got to fight to get that arm past his head because otherwise, oh, it's looking it's looking deep. He wants to tap. He tap. DeHaven yeah. taps him in round three, ladies and gentlemen. Tyler DeHaven dethroning the champ. Hey man, that was a great performance from both guys, man. But Tyler was able to impose his will. Hey, look at his coach holding him up. <laughs> hey, Don't blow his D out over here. Marty with his strength right there. Hey man, these guys both, I mean, they love each other, man. Without a doubt. It's tough to see, you know, your your teammate or you know your friend lose his title to you, but hey man, like I said, gotta this be is anybody. A, hey, <laughs> this is a, yeah, exactly. Yeah, man, that's what I love right there. Helping him up, man, that's amazing. Bushido. This isn't like football or basketball, man. It's not a team sport. You got to go in there by yourself. Without a doubt. All I can say is, are you not entertained? Woo, right. fellas. Dude, it's hard for me to talk to these, man. But I'm, you know, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to do my job. That's why at the end of the last show, Jens Bowen was standing up, sitting here, shadow boxing. <laughs> like, slow down, champ, slow down. Hey. I mean, fights like these, man, this was definitely a main event feel without a shadow of a doubt. That was uh, that was amazing. The energy was, uh, it was just electric, man. That was cool. The Haven in that third round just was not going to take the L. Oh, no, man. He, You could see his face when he left the second round. He was Ladies head. and gentlemen, ready, your referee, ready. Bruce Allen, has called a stop to this contest at 38 seconds into round two, declaring your winner by submission due to arm triangle and new cage aggression amateur bantamweight champion, Tyler D.
Monty Haven. It's fun though. That was fun. All right, come on over here, champ. All right, we're here with your winner and new Cage Digression Amateur Bantamweight Champion, Tyler DeHaven. Tyler, congratulations on the big win. Very hard-earned victory. Talk to us how it was in that matchup against a former teammate like Lee Colvin, man. Talk about that for a little bit. You know, I got to say, I appreciate, you know, the opportunity. I worked my ass off to get here. He worked hard to get here, too. You know what? We both came out and we fought hard and that's all I can say, you know. One of those things, strictly business. Absolutely. We're friends at the end of the day, but when you step in here, you gotta put everything aside. Just, you know, you're here to win. That's right. So look, you've, you've toyed around in a few different weight classes, obviously found a lot of success at 135. Any thoughts of going back up to 145 every now and again? You know what? I might come up one time. I'm gonna come up one time and that person knows who it is. If you wanna message me on Facebook, we'll fucking meet in this, this cage and I'll show you what's up, buddy. All right, well look, it seems like we have another bout on our hands, another potential fight matchup. But real quick, before we get into the celebration and everything else, Tyler, on a serious note, a lot of work, a lot of preparation went into this bout. Anyone that you wanna mention or give thanks to before you get to the locker room? Absolutely. First off, I wanna thank my coach, Marty, and Sal and every single one in that gym coming in there, training with me. They don't have to do this. They do it for me. They do it for the guys in the gym and everyone else in here, you know. We benefit from fighting each other every day in here. It's not just our team, it's every team. And most importantly, Goodwin, for trying to do everything he can to get this damn show to go. And you know what, he still did it after everything, you know. He never quit. Just like everyone in here, we don't quit. We keep coming and coming and coming. And I wanna thank my whole entire family Every single sponsor I have on the Marine, uh, Jackson Auto Body, Green Valley Roofing, Walking Window Tent, um, A and J Trucking, and I'm uh, Quad City Safety. Probably forgetting a few. And I love my son. That was for you, buddy. I'm um, Daddy's coming. Daddy's brought that belt home, boy. Always a joy to watch. It's been a pleasure seeing your career develop in the cage, Tyler, and we're definitely looking forward to seeing more in the future. Let's hear it one more time, ladies and gentlemen, for your new cage digression amateur bantamweight champion, Tyler DeHaven. Get your ice cold, Bud Light, Bud Light. Sell to hip. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now, hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. BudLight.com slash delivery. Hey, Bud Light. How many? All I can say is, wow, boys. Oh, man. That's what we get from Cage Aggression MMA. What an incredible bout. Now we have Morgan Sickinger versus Jonas Flock. They got to do some follow-up. <laughs> they got to follow that one. Right out the cage. Yeah, without a doubt. That one is going to be a tough one to follow. And With, a little it is. spice at the end where he's calling somebody out and telling them he's oh, going to go yeah. up to 145. you got to love that spirit. I Definitely, love it. Man. The captain, Morgan Sigginger, fighting out of Highland Fight Systems. Kick it, CMS Fitness out of Wisconsin. He said an old school wrestling coach invited him to a New Year's party, and we watched his first amateur fight, and he started in 2005. That started, that hooked him. Said it was something he could try, and he tried it out in 2006, and the rest is history. Jeffrey, did it hook him because he's wearing Got a, a pirate, pirate hat? hat. <laughs> yeah. no I wanted to say it. I wanted to say it. Recognize that this is a, an amazing matchup for both of us. Joe Nasty is a class act, and I dig it. Game on. I love the fighting spirit and all these fighters here at Cage Aggression. It's so awesome. That last fight was a perfect testimony of it. Oh, yeah. He feels his experience and his resilience and his never given up attitude is going to be the deciding factor for him. He's the one who will keep coming back until it's done. That is some fighting spirit. Hey, can't and get it's better winning, than that. Right? And he came out with the pirate hat, so. <laughs> the California kid, he looks up the California kid, Uriah Hall. California Uriah kid, favor. Uriah Faber. Yeah, I was going to say, that's not your end. Uriah Hall's a bad man, too, though. Absolutely. Congratulations him on his victory over the spider not too long ago. This gentleman also looks, the caption also looks up to little evil Denz Pulver. OK. 
Hey, little Iowa love there. Mr. Sicking Jer. Apologies if I pronounced that wrong. <laughs> Coming to the cage now, Mr. Jonas Flock. Fighting out of Pura Vida, Pura Vida, BJJ and MMA, West Jacksonport, Wisconsin. Got in an MMA because he took fight, took a fight on a whim. He liked it so much and he kept doing it. Everybody's story is so very unique how they get into the sport. Oh yeah. Because he has good striking, good wrestling, and dashing good looks. Haven't seen that oh. one before. If only that could win fights. <laughs> <laughs> Look good, fight good, man. That's that's a thing. Without a doubt. Looks up to the gentleman who was on our main event card tonight, Zach Otto and Scott Voss. We got it basically even here, fellas, on the polls, 50-50, so it seems to be a pickup. Really excited about this one. Jonas Flock saying he has fought in a range of different fights from 145 to 185. Wow. To 85? Yeah. It's not quite Joe Riggs, 155 to heavyweight all the way throughout his career. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, you know, we're Big getting Joe. there. On the way. That is quite a gap he's covered. We are getting ready to get in there and get on the good foot and do the bad thing. The captain, Morgan Sickinger, against Jonas Flock. As we inch closer to our co-main in our main event of the evening. And even though it wasn't on paper the main event, ladies and gentlemen, what we just saw between Mr. DeHaven and Mr. Colvin, that was main event quality right there. Oh, man, it definitely was. But again, this is what we all come to expect when we either Hey, at cageaggression.tv, or we come in the River Center live in Davenport, Iowa, to see these incredible matchups. I'm liking Fox's mustache here. He's got a good little stash going on. <laughs> He's got like the 70s porn star look going. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like Jonas is pulling ahead in the polls 60 to 40%. So. Maybe some fans out there at cagedaggression.tv thinking Jonas is going to Ladies and gentlemen, one. our next bout of the evening is scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the Caged Aggression Professional Lightweight Division, powered by Squirrel's Tree Service. Introducing first, fighting out of the brute red corner. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, and weighed in at 155 pounds. He trains at CMS Fitness and is sponsored by Kick It. Full Circle Fitness, MMA Most Wanted, Bob Sexton Team, Lakeshore Screen Printing and Embroidery, Cheryl Quintana, Graphic and Web Designer, 920 CBD, Dirty Diva Farm and Gardens, Poplar Farm Sales and Service, DMTD's Management and Training, John Bilka, 10th Street Quick Lube, Shark Fin Remodeling, W-O-M-T Sports Talk, Rocco's Signs, and Strong Performance, LLC. Joining us from Manitowoc, Wisconsin, Captain Morgan Sickinger. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, and weighed in at 156 pounds. He trains at Pura Vida, BJJ, and MMA. Joining us from Egg Harbor, Wisconsin, Jonas Fla. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The captain versus Flock. <laughs> Burmese, what's our poll looking like? We got Flock at almost 60%, but a pretty, pretty even poll right here. Really looking forward to the first fist flying right now. Square up in the middle of the cage, touch gloves. Boys squaring up against each other. Flock walking him down. Flock dropping that left hand a lot. 
catching that kick. Dropping it. Right back up, trying to get to his feet. Good Which elbows is, here. Those are really good those elbows. Those are hard. And I'm sitting yeah. right here listening to it. Those are hard that elbows. I've seen fights ending. Yeah, those. that sounded nasty. Siggy just got her pushed up against the cage here. Flock definitely defending, got to his feet pretty quick. Ooh, those, ooh, those elbows and those, those, those hits. Another those elbow. Ooh, got that arm. Up. Got that arm isolated too. Those would be a reason not to go for a shot. Yeah, without a doubt. For all the openings there. And taking advantage of him, Flock is. Signature's still trying to work that takedown. He just got one in the back of the head. Got to watch that. Yes, sir. That is frowned upon. It's almost like he's working on a reverse crucifix yeah, at this say, point. Yeah, like reverse a crucifix, cru there. crucifix here. Great job defending. Without a doubt, Flock is definitely doing a great job. Back to his feet, right here in front of us. Yes. See, guys got wise to those elbows. Got his head between the legs. Flock unloading on that rib cage, though. Elbows, big shot. Looking for every open he has to make Ooh. him not want to shoot, and that's exactly what you want. Anytime someone shoots, you want to make him pay, and he's doing exactly that. Without a doubt. Morgan has grinded through all of it, not giving up on this takedown, though. And he'll he's, fill it tomorrow. Yeah, he's definitely he's definitely taking some shots if he does get this takedown. I don't know how much more he can take of this, guys. If he finishes the fight via this way, I've never seen that before. I mean, the ribs can only take so much. He's going to be pissing that red stuff tomorrow. He's getting that single leg, but it's worth all those shots. If That's what I'm wondering. The juice worth the squeeze, yeah. as they say. <laughs> Flock doing a great job still defending that takedown. What's uh, what's Sickinger's move here? Should he stand up and try to create some distance? I definitely not would, man, out. because this right here, this position is not working out. I would bail from it. You're taking more damage than it's worth because you see that as soon as he takes him down, Flock gets right back to his feet. Flock landing up. elbows. Ah. He just is a he can strike from anywhere. It's, it seems great clinch. Sickinger's rib cage on both sides are just welted up from those elbows and those big shots. Flock doing great with the chin and in, in the jaw, which is it controls it controls you. He's doing great of putting that chin in the jaw so he can control him wherever he goes on the cage. Able to get those shots off because of that. Interesting. The chin, the whole thing. Dude, Those knees crazy. to the body are landing. Because of the chin to the jaw, man, he's able to control his head and know where he's throwing those. I learned that early going to Militage. Oh, good knee to the chin. Drop. That one hurt him. That yeah. one hurt him bad. He said it folded him. See if he can take advantage of it. Flock doing, being smart, letting him stand up. Without a doubt. He's going to probably bring this one home. It seems that way, man. He's got him pretty hurt. Going for that big high kick again. Ooh, gotta be careful coming in with your hands down. He could easily catch one. Yeah, of course, it's, it's a game we fight. In. I love the way he's sneaking those knees in, man. It's like he's kind of working a plum, half plum, but he's not really bringing any Upper knees cut. to it. Dropped with the uppercut. The guy, he just. Morgan must want to be on the ground. He just doesn't want to be hit anymore. We got 30 seconds left. Round one. Very belabored. Sickinger getting back to his feet. He's hurt. I don't think he recovered from that last uppercut all the way. I don't think so. Or the accumulation of all those other blows. Dude, he sneaks. Flock sneaks those knees in so smooth. Nice few shots from Sickinger there, but Flock still on the offensive. Is Morgan going to get through this first? Uh, yeah, looks, looks like, like he's going to get through the first round. He's a tough guy for all those punches. He just Without ate. a doubt. He doesn't seem like he wants to be there. I'm completely <laughs> wrong. He seems like he's in a no mod situation here. Oh, man. Yeah, he is hurting for certain. The guy's just welted up. Ooh, it's got a, got a big, big welt on his eye here. Wow. You could almost call that a 10-8 round. I think it's a little tough because... 
Uh, Morgan did keep some cage control, trying to take that takedown while taking those blows. But boy, he took a lot on answer yeah, I think, shots. I think the blows oh, man, almost the strikes, overshadowed yeah, those. Yeah, overshadowed the shots, man, for sure. I mean, that was some punishment right here in front of us. I mean, when he was elbowing his head, it was like a, it was hitting like a melon or something. It was, it echoed throughout the building. I mean, there was times Those shots had, right there, wow. Oh, man, those are hard shots, man. And the body shots were un unanswered. Look at those. That's ridiculous. That is just punishing. Ginger, I'll tell you tomorrow. Is gonna feel, yeah, he's gonna tomorrow, feel that tomorrow. Man. He's gonna be like, "What did I get into?" He's like, "I want all the ibuprofen." <laughs> hey, he's, he seems ready for this round. So, hey, hats off to him, man. Absolutely, showing some heart coming out for round two. Jonas Flock versus the captain Morgan Sickinger. Flock said, "No hand hand bumps here." I got business to handle. Ooh. I like the way Flox put those strikes together. But Sickinger's definitely not out of it yet. Yeah, Morgan landed overhand right there. That was pretty smooth. Let's see if he can make it happen. Switching positions. He had a good bite. The overhand right. See, Flock is dropping that left hand. So just ooh, good head kick there. Makes for a perfect home for that right from counter from Sickinger. Exactly. <laughs> He's looking for it for sure. Sicky graze my mustache. <laughs> Fighters still on their feet here as we start out the second round. Lock in with a switch blitz just to tie up because this is where he was controlling the first round. Back up against the cage. Ooh, good elbow. Yeah, it was right at the top of the head. Ooh, good knee to the jaw. He's going to drop down Heard again. That one too. Jeez. He is doing a great job of just creating enough space just to, to get sneak enough effective in. strikes in there. That's those a, knees are incredible right now. Dude, Morgan's so chin and hard. body. Oh, my goodness. Dude, Every time hard. he goes to the chin or with those knees, man, he. Morgan wants to drop down, but it shows his heart. Ooh, uppercut. Left, right, he, left, He's right. not taking any more of these guys. I don't know, man. This dude is Clock doing is too, so much. Man. He's still it's, there. It's just so much punishment to take. I'm huh. certainly not counting him out. I mean, in the second round, when he went down that second time, he didn't want to. He grabbed onto um, uh, Flock's arm. So yeah. he didn't just flatten out. I mean, this guy's chin is incredible. It's incredible, man, and he's still there. Look at him. Hands up, chin down. I didn't hear no bell. <laughs> I think he's got to try to take advantage of the fact that he is hanging that left hand that so left, low. And he's not even looking for the right. And he's leading with it every, every single, single time. Every single time, man. I, if I was his coaches, I would be just yelling that overhand right, overhand <laughs> right. But it seems, you know, you never know in these type of fights, man. He could have injured it in some way. You never know what could have happened. Those body shots, I mean, you see on the back of his right shoulder, he has a lot of redness. Absolutely. Accumulating punishment for sure. Flock still making it very difficult for him to finish takedowns. Looking to tie his hands up to finish that takedown. He's going to run the single here. Oh, he got it. the takedown. He's still got some gas in the tank. Oh, yeah, he's going to fight. He's going to fight, man. We've seen him take so much punishment. What else? You know? <laughs> you got a brick. He's you, not going nowhere. You hit him with everything but the kitchen sink, man. It's crazy. Big Those knee to the grill. Three of them. Four. He's, look, he's still up. Wow. Wow. He he's tapped, 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 he tapped. That was it. That last one dug him. Oh, boy. Ooh. Tap off from strikes, ladies and gentlemen. Folded him like a newspaper, fellas. Jeez, right there. That was that a one. dominant performance there from Flock, man. That, oh, man, you can't get any better than that with the knees. The, the clinch is just. He's tough as hell, man. This guy's tough. This he didn't guy, go the out. The captain is tough as hell, but you can't do. He didn't go out. You can't do back-to-back -back fights like that. No man. way. No That's way. just entirely too much punishment to be taking at one time. It's tough, man, and it, it's hard to watch. It's 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 one of those things, man. 
when you get a tap in from strikes like that, that means you've been hit a lot. A lot. Well, I mean, at the end, what was it? About five or six at least unanswered on the inside. Those, those knees, knees, yeah. Those, oh. They were, they were. Here we get a replay crucial. of it. Uppercut, left. I don't right. know if that's the same thing, but still, right. just more of the same. There they are. Literally one, two. That one was half blocked. Two. That, yeah, that one, was four. two. Oh, my gosh. He's like, I five. That was it right there. That fifth one he tapped him on. No yeah. mas, baby. No mas. That was that was legit, man. That was a good performance, man. It those, really was. Those knees are hard to get in in those tight positions, man. Hats off to that guy. He works those. Obviously, you can tell, man. He was getting elbows in, strikes, tight strikes, tight knees. Like Jason was saying, was creating just enough distance to slip those in there. Yeah, man. Doesn't even seem to be breathing hard at all. <laughs> Not much sweat <laughs> off him, if at all. Jeez. Another night at the office, I guess. I'm shaving my mustache like that next time. <laughs> I like it, right? It's a little bit of Freddie Mercury yeah, and a little bit is. of a Sanchez, right? It's oh, not man. too much, not too little. Yeah, I love it. I like it too. The handlebar. <laughs> Quite frankly, if he stole that pirate hat and he was wearing it, I mean, he could be an extra on the Pirates of the oh, Caribbean. Oh, gosh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Ben Wilson, has called a stop to this contest. At three minutes, 33 seconds into round two, declaring your winner by submission due to strikes, Jonas Flaw. Come on over here, Jonas. All right, here we are with your winner, Jonas Flock. Jonas, appreciate you making the trip all the way from Wisconsin and putting on such an entertaining, fast-paced show for us. Hey, tell us, anything catch you off guard in this bout here tonight? Uh, no, not really. Uh, players come out here and bang, uh, keep it off the mat. Uh, it's about time I showed my striking skills, and uh, I think I did that today. I would have to agree with you. I'll tell you what. You came to the Kama Cage, competed for the first time. I'm sure there's a lot of people that might want to go and learn a little bit more about you. Where can they go to find out more about Jonas Flock? I can uh, follow me on Facebook, Jonas Flock, Instagram, Joe Nasty. Um, that's the only social media I got right now. But uh, thank you everyone for the support. Thank you, Mike Goodwin, for putting on this awesome show. It's my first time being in this cage, and uh, I love it. Well, we're glad you love it because we're definitely looking forward to more of it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for your winner here tonight, Jonas Flock. Winner and impressive. Big win from Jonas Flock in a very, very impressive fashion as we move on to our co-main event, Bobby Downs versus Gabriel, Hens of Stone, Mota. Hey, man, from what I've seen, Mota leave, lives up to the name Hands of Stone, man. He has a great overhand right he's finished a lot of fights with. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's a little bit of heat. Mota not making weight. And uh, just them discussing it face to face, him and Bobby Downs, you can see there was a lot of discomfort, kind of added to the tension, making me a little more excited for this oh, fight, man. gentlemen. I, I am imagine. pumped. I could imagine, man, missing weight, and it wasn't just by one or two pounds, it was by 13, so that's a lot, man. And hats off to Bobby for still taking the fight and willing to get in there with him, but you this know. Should, it should be an 80% tax, dude. 100%, weight, man, I've had a fight. It was amateur level, but I had a fight where a guy missed weight by almost the same amount, man, and it was a, it was a grueling fight. I finished it in the fourth, but it was something I had to work for. So hats off to Bobby Downs. They call him the wild boy for no re or for a reason, man. The guy is a wild boy. He's getting here with a guy that came in overweight, and he's still willing to take the fight. That shows you his heart, his dedication. And uh, we're going to see what he comes in and does with this guy, because I'm telling you, man, I've looked up this guy's fights, and his overhand right is deadly. 
Well, and if there is no penalty, whether it's here, the UFC, whatever, for people to, you know, miss weight and still go fight, I mean, again, a tax of your purse. Well, like there we, is a tax on this one. I believe it's a 30% tax. Yeah, no, yeah, I think it's 30 on it. And yeah. then that still hurts, without a doubt. But I believe me, if it was 80%, yeah. you wouldn't see it nearly as much. You wouldn't see it as much. Well, man. I don't know if you guys caught it, but uh, Mike Perry missed weight by five pounds today over at the UFC. And instead of being like, oh, I'm sorry, he dabbed. And then he went viral on social oh, media. Wow. So maybe you just own it. Maybe you just <laughs> roll with it and you kind of flaunt it. Uh, and yeah. you get the social media play. There but obviously go. at this level, all it's, news is good know, news, though, right? That's right. Controversy that's makes cash, like Eric Bischoff <laughs> said. Bobby Downs making his way to the cage, fighting out of Peoria Muay Thai, Mountain Florida. Said his older brother was a boxer, and I figure I'd try fighting since I was getting in a lot of trouble. Another person who found the path of mixed martial arts a way to get out of their troubles. Obviously, it looks like he has a little bit more length on him, and he's very aware of that. He's looking like he's going to be long and use his boxing to a background, his, to his, his boxing background to his advantage, and go in and out with his striking. He recognizes his opponent as a really good striker. This should be a very interesting one, ladies and gentlemen. And another interesting thing, Bobby Down says he's never had a fight camp before. This is his first fight camp and had a chance to actually train five or six days a week along with strength and, condi strength and conditioning. I think that's very is interesting. That first is, man, camp. because he's came in there and fought, you know, some of the best in Cage Aggression's roster. Um, like I said, man, I grew up with this guy, man. I, I watched him be the little basketball stud and then with long hair to becoming a uh, MMA beast. Dude, dude's a beast, man. He'll get in there with anybody, man. He was, no, I'm telling you, he was a straight arrow growing up, man, and he found this, and then and he became a good, a great fighter, man. Look, look, his whole image changed, man. I wish I could show you guys the image of Bobby <laughs> Downs before. It's awesome to see his evolution in the sport, man. Absolutely, without a doubt. And you hear that a lot. You know, like we even talked about it tonight, evolving. I mean, not just as a fighter, but I've met so many mixed martial artists and martial artists, you evolve as a human being, it just changes you. Dude, it has to, man. I mean, it gives you more, like, dude, it did that for me more than anything, so I can attest to that, man. It changed my whole life. I'm able to, I'm able to do everything differently. I see things so differently. Right. I'm able to, you know, break things down in your life, you know, things that you aren't succeeding in. This, this right here, the drive you get from this, it takes it into your, your everyday life, and it's, it's amazing, man. It really is. It's such a very humbling sport, like you said, and then you take it into life. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our co-main event of the evening, scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the Cage Aggression Professional Middleweight Division, powered by Rubies. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands five feet, nine inches tall and weighed in at 199 pounds. He trains with the Chicago Fight Team and is sponsored by New Image Barbershop. Keep Sale Tattoo, Mi Jalisco Taqueria, Don Pedro's Bar and Grill, El Salto Restaurant, Flawless Productions, Jason's Bar and Grill, Stranded Astronaut, Trusted Movers, 10 Second Automotive, and DJ Angel. Joining us from Hammond, Indiana, Gabriel, Hands of Stone, Mota! And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands an even six feet tall and weighed in at 185 pounds. He trains at Peoria Muay Thai and is sponsored by True Healthcare, American Hemp, The Greenhouse, Fire Mariah Tattoos, Big Bud's Clothing, Dying Breed Apparel, Old World Strength, Human Performance Lab, Clark and Glasgow, Attorneys at Law, Gorilla Piss Ammonia, and JDC Construction. Joining us from Peoria, Illinois, the Wild Boy, Bobby Downs. Word to the wise, ladies and gentlemen, don't blink. Oh man, this is definitely the fight to say that in. Here we go, our co-main event, Bobby Downs versus Gabriel, Hands of Stone Mota begins now. Touch it up in the middle of the, in the cage. Oh man, you can definitely see the weight in this guy's legs. Jeez. Big high kick. 
Yeah, he's got big quads going on there. Good defense from Bobby here. Get in there and do that dirty boxing. One shot from yep. one of these guys can end it. Yep. I'd like to see Bobby use his range in this fight, man. That's what he said. He's going to fight long and fight from the outside and go in and out. He tends to he tends to go into fights and, and like his name says, Wild Boy, he, he'll go into a fight and just start swinging him. But he doesn't want to do this with this guy. He wants to use his fight IQ and fight smart. Ooh, See, that right hand. That straight right. Bobby has to clinch up here and, and get his wits about him. Oh, catches him with a left. Nice. Bobby doesn't want to see. He's backing off. That's good to see. That's good to see. Yeah, you don't want to jump in there and stay inside with him. Ooh, Ooh. big counter left. Clean shot. Bobby wants to stay long. He has to stay long in this fight. This guy is winging those overhands. Loading up without a doubt. Wow. If I was Bobby, I would test his ground game and see what he's bringing on the table on the ground. Feel him out. Mota already with a welt on his left leg from one of those low kicks from Bobby. <clears throat> Taking each other's time, that's for sure. They both, both earned each other's respect for sure in this fight. Moda continually going to that overhand right. Without a doubt. I mean, that's all he's throwing is overhands, man. Bobby has not busted open, though. A little in and out there, like he said he was going to do. That's what he has to do in this fight. As you can see, this guy. But he's already put a weld on the back of his leg. I would be chopping those legs down as well. Yeah, the big man won't be able to move near as well. Without Caught him with the left, right. Yeah, he did. He's hurt. He needs to stay outside. Another left. He's backing up. Ooh, nice straight left. Mota clearly with him. Bobby's got a chin, though, man. As yeah, you they can both. see. Woo. Ooh, good, good body, body kick, there. kick. Caught by Mota. Loading up. Mota is definitely loading up with those shots. Man, dude. But then missing weight and having to fight extra for that that weight, those punches, you know, Yo, yeah. those will take a toll on a, a smaller guy. It seems like Moda so far anyway just has that one shot. He's not really setting it up at all. Not at all. He's just winging him. He's cocking him back. Bobby has to become wise to that. It seems like Bobby's way more technically proficient, it seems like, as far as like doing the in and out and evading. Whoa. Good up on the left. Man, I can nice. imagine that weight is definitely taking it. Jeez, man. Even though Moda's winging those punches is extremely calm in there. He's well paced. He's patient. He's not doing it more than once or twice. He's not getting wild, and he's creating space when he needs it as well. Oh yeah, he closes the distance well. Without a doubt. And it doesn't even seem like he's throwing punches to close that distance. It seems like he's just fainting, 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 and coming in. And he's landing the shots that he does throw. Man, it, they're heavy. They're definitely heavy. Bobby's got to do more of that. More leg kicks. Stay on the outside. Circle around. Do not go into his power, which is what he's doing right now. Good, good. Super good man punch. Nice yeah. Followed up with a leg kick. With he's got to mix it up. Elbows. When they're in tight like that, Bobby has to throw elbows. The spinning that elbow he just threw could have landed really nice. Motel is doing a good job of pairing some of these punches coming from Bobby. Good body shot there from Bob. Ooh, Ooh, big, big right there. Bob. Bob's got to oh, come up. That was a good right hand. Oh, he's done. Bo Bob's got to come up. Bob's got to fight here. Oh, oh, I, I think it's going to be over That's here. It. That's it, it is over, ladies and gentlemen. In round one, Gabriel Hands of Stone living up to his name. Hey, man. I told you that guy hits hard, man. That was hard. To Jeez, man. That was a tough one to watch, man. I grew up with Bobby, man, and I know how hard he works. But hey, hats off to his opponent, man. That was a great fight from him. Uh, he went in there, he he imposed his will. Like you said, that weight though on those punches, man, that had to add up. Jeez. You know, for I mean, big you can... lunging right hands, 
He was really, really controlled with them. You don't he see was. that a lot. There it's almost go. like Fedor style, you know? Yeah. Fedor loved those big, looping rights and left. Shoot, man, I would even say Tyson, the way he was <laughs> yes. weaving in, dude, he, he looked good. But well, like he's a shorter guy at this uh, weight class. Yeah. Like you guys mentioned, that ability to close that gap so fast for such a big guy. Hey, man, hats off to both the guys. Hats off to Bobby for taking the fight, you know, and. You know, man, hats off to his opponent for finishing it the way he did, man. That was that was pretty dominant. Mota was bringing some hammers. Man, Bobby ate a lot of those, though, man. You know, if Bobby had been able to get in more leg kicks, been a little bit more controlled, and honestly, just not get clipped as many times. Yeah. Because how many of those hammers can you take? Yeah, you can't, man. <laughs> those kicks, the leg kicks, man, those would have been... Those would have been a game changer. I, I wish he would have focused more on that. But it's, it's stuck to that strategy of fighting long, being in yeah. and out, because he had the length, he had the height advantage. Man, that is such a big shot that he took to go down. For real. Yeah, and the knees didn't help. Referee calling a halt to the action. Round one, Gabriel hands a stone mode of picking up the big W against Bobby Downs. Cage aggression does not disappoint, yeah. my Golly, friends. Boy, deliver. the finishes are real. The <laughs> competition is high. Definitely, every fight. Another first rounder. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Bruce Allen, has called a stop to this contest at 4 minutes, 34 seconds into round one, declaring your winner by TKO, Gabriel, Hands of Stone, Mota. Come on over here, Gabriel. You ain't getting off that easy. All right, we're here with your winner, Gabriel Mota. Gabriel, congratulations on an impressive Cage Digression debut. Hey, talk to us. What were some of the words you guys shared there post-fight there in the corner? I mean, uh, I just told him to keep his head up, you know. We all start off rough. I started off my career 0-3. Everybody thinks I was just this guy that won my fights and shit stuff like that but uh no nah, man you know you just it's setbacks you know it's like how many of you had a shitty year this year but you're still here you know what i mean and that's how he's got to take this fight he made it this far hey man one like mike said half of us have to win half of us have to lose but you know you guys seen me fight i i come to bang you know like Nobody wants to see a boring fight. You guys didn't pay all this money to see me lay on some dude for 15 minutes and shit like that. So, I mean, if you guys, if you guys like seeing knockouts or exciting fights, you know, I'm the guy. Cage the grass and bring me back whenever. Two night offense, I'll fight both nights. You know, it don't matter. I'm here to bang, man. I just want to fight. That's it. Well said, well said. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for your winner here tonight, Gabriel Mota. Go ahead, Gabriel. Shout out to everybody that came out. 219 Hammond, baby, you already know. Chicago Fight Team, my coach, everybody. Uh, my mom's going to be pissed if I don't give her a shout out. My mom, crazy Puerto Rican lady in here, I'm sure everybody heard her. And, uh, you know, just everybody back home. And, you know, Chicago Fight Team, everybody, man, like I said, you guys want to see exciting fights, find me on the fight card. I promise you it's going to be your money's worth. Appreciate it. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, your winner tonight, Gabriel Hands of Stone Mota. Jamie, it's hurt. Great Jackson job, buddy. Stunned against Cage. He's out. He's out.
here, ladies and gentlemen, the main event of the evening. Clarence Jordan going up against Zach Otto. Boys, you guys are both a little bit more familiar with Mr. Otto than I am. Give us a breakdown on what can we expect here in the main event. I'm hoping for thunder, my friend. I mean, I expect <laughs> yeah. him to come out, like he said, he had a lot of KOs on the regional scene, had fought in caged aggression before, but Clarence Jordan isn't looking to lose. Oh, definitely not, man. He wouldn't be here if he was. Zach Otto is a, he's a game opponent, though, with anybody he's faced. I've seen him in this cage aggression, in the cage aggression ring. I've seen him in the UFC ring. He's the same fighter in both. So let's see if he can take what he's been doing as far as he has come so far and see if he can go out here and do it to Clarence Jordan. Clarence Jordan fighting out of ROC Training Center. Saw it on TV and started wrestling the next year. Another one who got hooked from it on TV. It's very confident. I will be victorious. He's good at everything, but wrestling is his biggest strength. And one of his models in the game is the answer, Frankie Edgar. Definitely one to look up to. Oh, man, yeah, that's a tough one. His dedication is surmised pretty much as this right here. I once fought five rounds, drove back from North Dakota, and clocked in at my graveyard shift job. And it was his birthday. Ooh. My man is dedicated, clearly. Clarence Jordan getting ready to step into the cage in this main event of the evening as we come to the end almost of this trifecta of events, September, October, November. This is the last event of the year. What a way to go out, gentlemen. Woo, especially in the times we're in, you hear me? Without a doubt, the finishing we've seen, this is just what we come to expect from Cage Aggression. What are our polls looking like, my good man? They got Zach Otto in a big, big lead of almost 80% to 20, but I'm telling you, don't sleep on this guy. Without he's a, a metalhead, he's into the Deftones, he was <laughs> rocking a cool t-shirt. <laughs> and he said he's a wrestler too, man. Yeah. Hey, 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 Zach Otto's a good wrestler in his, in his own right, but you know, if this guy's a wrestler and he has no fear knowing that this guy, Zach Otto, fought in the UFC, a lot of times that'll, that'll deter a guy from taking a fight, but it doesn't seem that way in this fight. This is case aggression, so it becomes one of those any given on this night, Friday night, any time. These guys are so talented. And the thing with Zach is, he's not one of these UFC fighters that gets cut after a string of losses. In fact, he traded wins and losses. Oh, yeah. You know, he definitely so, did. You know, at any given moment, this guy is a top tier guy. And, you know, he's put you to sleep. Again, you couldn't have a better main event at this event here at Caged Aggression. Props to Mike Goodwin again. I don't think we've said it enough. Yeah. If we've said it a hundred times, we need to say it a thousand who, times. Who, who's Mike Goodwin? Uh, yeah, I, I hear he's a guy who puts on MMA events that people come to. And you can still, you know, despite all the obstacles, guys, there is still electricity in the air here right now, and I couldn't be more excited. As we move into this main event, Zach Otto wanted to compete after playing football in college and saw a local MMA show and was hooked. We hear that story all too much. Thinks, thoughts about his matchup, he realizes the tough guy who's skilled everywhere. Great opportunity for me to show there are levels to this sport without a doubt. And he is on the next level. Burmis, you just alluded to that. When he feels it's the difference maker, and it sounds like he definitely has you know, no stranger to the game, been in the UFC experience, he says is the difference maker at this point. Been around for a long time, but still in his prime. Been there with some of the best and use that to crafty, or to be crafty and to fight smart. So he's, hey. he's definitely put in the work and he's ready to show it tonight. Yeah, man, I mean, a lot of times, you know, you know, he's coming out of the UFC, so is it gonna be the guy that's trying to get there or is it gonna be the guy that's trying to get back? It's one of those things, man. You never know where a fighter's mind is at when it comes to being cut from the UFC. Yeah, I can attest sure. to that, as I said. I was in the UFC six fights in. I've never lost, I've never been to finish. I say I've lost nothing but decisions and that that deterred me it, it took, put me on a plateau downward you know yeah. now I'm finally working my way back up so let's see if Zach is going to be on the on the way up or is he is he going down right now is he on the way out you know what I mean well that's a huge part that we haven't really touched on tonight I mean people can be fully trained with the psychological game you Psych have to have your mind right it's so psychological Ladies and gentlemen, in attendance at the River Center, and for those streaming live around the world, this is our main event of the evening, scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the Cage Aggression Professional Middleweight Division, powered by 7G Distributing Bud Light. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He stands an even six feet tall and weighed in at 186 pounds. 
He trains at Minnesota Martial Arts Academy. Joining us from Waterloo, Iowa, Clarence Jordan. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, 11 inches tall and weighed in at 186 pounds. He trains at Pura Vida, BJJ and MMA and is sponsored by Rev Gear. Joining us from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Zach the Barbarian Otto. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the back. You're fighting for the caged aggression main event. Clarence, do you have any questions? Zach, do you have any questions? Touch them up now if you wish, and let's do this. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The Zach first, looking to be real calm here. The first round of our final bout of the evening and our final fight in event for this year, the 2020 year of our Lord. The gentlemen starting out, throwing some blows. Easy, easy, easy. He's trying to tie up. That take, looking for the takedown. Zach, no stranger to the takedown. No stranger to wrestling. He's a great wrestler, great defensive wrestler and offensive. So. This one, that short elbow on the inside. Put that cross behind that jab. Double up on it. Clarence yeah, a really good job of getting in and out right now. This time he's just taking a leg kick when going in. I wonder if that's going to stop him, but it doesn't seem to be. Is our pull close gaps at all? We're still looking at the same deficit there. We're looking at 76% for uh, Zach Otto and uh, just 23% for Clarence. Clarence definitely starting out looking good. Open up with that vicious right. Oh, good knee. This guy's definitely doing more than just one shot to put these combinations together. I like that leg kick up the end of that combination. Thunderous. You heard that bad boy reverberate. Clarence said he was a grappler, a wrestler, man, but it's looking like striking is, is something that he's, he's not, he's fancy to as well. Clarence saying wrestling is his biggest strength. He hasn't even uh, seemed to go for any takedowns. Okay, got his hand up though. Whoa! That caught him. Yes, it did. That could Zach's be Zach's on him. Zach's on him trying to finish the fight here. He's taking some shots here. One to the back of the head. Ref's got to watch out for that. But Clarence, Clarence is fighting not it, though. going out of Get back without to a fight. Back to the He's got two hooks Zach's in, though. Taking his back. Yep. Going to lock it in. Clarence he... not giving his back up, though. He's going to his triangle. Another arm triangle. Oh, arm and triangle. Is that is a tight one, boys. That's tight. It's hard to finish it in mouth when, oh. I just saw his hand go limp, but no. It's hard. There now he is, he's there he is. Now he's taking him to the side. That's just about a wrap, folks. He's out. He's out. Let your weight do the work. Let your weight do the work. It's hard to tell from this angle. Sometimes you go limp just to defend, you know, just so you're not tightened up, because your muscles sometimes will cut off the other artery Ooh, on he's you. got that cinch, too. He's defending well here. He's doing a little bit of the phone block. He's doing, you know, he's doing everything right here. And he's out, full mount right now. Absolutely. But nice as a wrestler, he's that. not going to want to be on his back. So you be be ready to see him trying to explode up. Going for that arm triangle. Another arm triangle. He's got to get his foot out there, really. But he's still. Clarence is, is doing great defending that. Without a doubt. Right arm on the hook. Work that left hand. Guard, Clarence. Let's start shrimping. Yeah, very nice defensive technique from Clarence Jordan against the, both of those arm triangles. They look tight. And I've, I've seen though, a lot of times wrestlers do really good with those arm triangles, man. They, they're just used to be able to be patient in those positions. 
There he goes. Ooh, tied him up again. Good job. He was almost escaped, Zach was. If I was Clarence, I would be looking for that underhook on the left-hand side and coming up on that cage. And it would not be flat on my back here. Now he's going to give up his back, which is not the... He's, he's, he's fancy for that as well. He's, one minute, one minute. He's definitely, Zach is definitely working his position here. Oh, he's got it in. Oh, that's sunk in pretty deep. But yes, he does. That's going to be a tap. There's no way he's getting out of that one. Is it under he his chin? He's out of there. He's out of there. He doesn't freak out when he's in those positions, man. That That is that's crucial. That's man. crucial, man. I'm telling you. Hand on the face. Let's drop some short elbows. 30 seconds yes. left in the first round. Clarence Jordan putting forth a great defensive effort with some very powerful offense from Zach Otten. Otto. I'm sorry. See the way Zach's posting that leg out, not allowing him to, to push him over. Oh, going for the arm bar last second. Good timing on it. Can he get it, though? Back up here against that cage. And get the, full the, room. the full extension, yeah. It seems Cla Clarence is pretty, he's not new to this, man. It seems like he's a, he understands these, these positions that Zach Elder's putting him in. I'm interested to see that kick that started it all because it looked like it closely clipped his body, but it might have caught his chin yeah. on the way in. He it definitely was level. the start to that uh, dominance by Zach Otto. Otherwise, the first minute and a half, two minutes was very highly contested. Oh, yeah. Jordan looked very good, and even on the ground, looked great in defense. Yeah. He was put in a couple tough spots. Without a doubt. That was yeah. very impressive. And that was on bottom control. I'm sure he's used to being top control, being a wrestler. So let's let's see if he can take it to his world. Let's see if we get that replay of that kick. Dude, he threw a couple of them, man, it looked like. And one of them landed pretty flush. Definitely highly contested first round there. There's one, and there's another one here. He throws another one. There was one where he really gives him the business, the sweet chin music, as they say. Coming right here. Oh, no. There it is. That's the set. He threw two right here. There it is, right there. He threw two right the chin. Yep. Yep. The second Ooh. one, he caught. What a beard. Oh, man. George got a beard. Right, you ready? Clarence got a you ready? chin on that, dude. That was solid. Starting out round two. No touchy this time. No touchy. Clarence with his hands up a little higher. Let's see if Clarence tries to implement he's, some of that wrestling. He's trying to get that kick back. <laughs> The fighters still seem to have some gas in the tank. Oh, yeah, man. These are high level fighters, man. Main event for, no, for a reason. Exactly. Both of them very patient. I like the way that, or the way Clarence ends those combinations with those lower leg kicks. Great defense there by Clarence. Turning around, looking for a high crotch. He's gonna try to flip, he's gonna try to flip Zach Otto here. I'm sure he's strong enough to do it. His coaches are yelling it, so I'm sure he does this often. Zach, no stranger to it. Zach's doing a really good job of distributing his weight against the cage. Exactly. Not moving too much, not using enough, you know, too much force, and then just kind of waiting it out. Mm -hmm. He's, he is very disciplined, very, uh, with his expenditures of energy. He's definitely very mindful of... Yeah, if I was Clarence, I'd explode. run the single here. Uh, Good right. right. Uh, another right from Clarence, right? Back and forth here. Yeah. Ooh, those cap picks are going to pay toll, man. He's landing those pretty, pretty flush. Nice welts here on the left leg of Mr. Otto. That right kick finding a home for Mr. Clarence Jordan. There's another one right there. A little lazy on that one. Hands up, hands up. Yeah, I was going to say, I would like to see Clarence throw a little more feints. His, his punch is Zach will become, you know, he'll start catching the time. He, he needs to start feinting a little more, mixing it up a little more. Big low go high. Big, Big left caught him. 
Clarence needs to turn into him now. Zach looking for the armbar here. That's pretty deep. Ooh, that's, yeah, that's, that's a, a tap, tap ladies and gentlemen. I was going to say, Zach Otto's gone game is very, very strong. He's Finally getting that armbar there. Look for it in the first round. This round, he had plenty of time to finish it. So, great job from Zach Otto, showing that he belongs where he was. Very impressive performance by both fighters. Yeah, you can tell this is not Zach's first fight. He was uh, that ring Calm, general shit, you could just tell. Yeah. Yeah, man. He knew he, he had something to prove tonight, man. He's not even sweating. At all. No, his cage IQ showed throughout that fight because Clarence George was no pushover. And no, he was no. trying to really. He tried hard, man. He tried yeah. really hard that fight. He was well, trying to implement that game plan. You know, he was going for that takedown. Zach remained really calm, was able to create distance, and just, you know, he's got a big, big left and right hand. Finally caught him, took advantage, finished the submission. If anything, Clarence will take from this fight is that there is levels to this, as Zach said, and you have to you have to overcome these high obstacles like that, man, and, and go in there and be ready and be prepared to overcome those. Because these moments like this, you know, like right now, like when he got finished with that armbar, there was a couple escapes he could have done. He waited a little last minute, and he paid for it, you know? Well, you know, iron sharpens iron. You take a loss to somebody like him, it's just an opportunity to learn. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Bruce Allen, has called a stop to this contest at 2 minutes, 37 seconds into round 2, declaring your winner by submission due to armbar, Zach the Barbarian Auto. Come on over for a second, Zach. Zach, first of all, congratulations on a big win on your return to the Kama Cage. Talk to us real quick, man. How's it feel about coming away with such a big technical win, man? Oh, hu huge. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Clarence Jordan. I've known him for a long time, and we both have a lot of experience, so it was good to finally share this cage with him, and uh, he's a hell of a dude. Well, I I'll tell you what, it looks like you both came into the fight in great shape. Anything that Clarence did tonight that kind of took you off your game, caught you off guard a little? I've been around a minute, so uh, not really. It took me off my game. I, I knew he was going to be tough, so that expectation held true. Uh, no big surprises, but super happy to get the win. Yes, sir. Well, look, I'll tell you what. Let's move on to an easier one then. Anyone you want to thank or anyone you want to mention before we start the celebration? Uh, yeah, my, my whole team, my family. Um, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs to this career, but without all these people here, you know, I wouldn't be here. So thanks, guys. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for your winner and class act, Zach the Barbarian Auto. That's going to put night one in the books for Cage Aggression 29 Determination. I'd like to thank all of you for being here, everyone at home for tuning in. And don't forget, if you like tonight, night two is right around the corner tomorrow night. Don't forget to join us. A few seats left. And of course, you can always catch it on pay-per-view if you can't make it here. Wow, night number one in the books, Burmis. That was an absolutely exceptional card. I expect nothing less from Cage Aggression MMA. Wow. First impressions? This is your first time at least being in the commentator seat. You've been here before and spectating. How awesome was this? If you want high-end MMA with people on their way up, with fire in their hearts and finishes in their fists, this is the promotion. Cage Aggression brings top-tier talent in here, and you can see how hungry they are. Oh, it's insane. I mean, it wasn't even a main event, but it had a super co-main event or main event feel. Tyler DeHaven, 
becoming the new champ up against Lee Colvin. Incredible submissions, incredible knockouts. The first three fights we had tonight, three of the five were all first round knockouts. Absolutely exceptional. Gabriel Moda using that big right hand, uh, finishing that fight. I mean, there were just so many great moments here tonight at Cage Aggression. Um, I don't think there was a bad fight all no, night. No, absolutely not. That's, we, don't, we don't do that. But, I mean, like I said, this is just night one. And with everything that's gone on, all the trials and tribulations that we've gone through over the, you know, the last three months, especially this week, I mean, I couldn't ask to go out any better than how we are tonight. And joining us to wrap it up, he, you know, had to go do natural things. He is here with us now. Man, how awesome was this? Oh, man, it was amazing, dude. Like, like it always is. Uh, Mike Goodwin does great with this with the matchups. It's always great, you know. Um, the main event was amazing, you know. Zach Otto finishing the finishing the fight the way he did. It just all night was it's amazing fights. Like I said, the first five fights were all three round. Three of the five were, you know, first round knockouts. Cage Aggression is the sickest promotion in the Midwest. From the production quality to our amazing production team, we will have the Croatian sensation with us tomorrow. Gentlemen, I mean, this is just night one. What do we expect from night two? The same thing, if not better. You know, we got a lot of big names tomorrow. And you got, you know, Pat Millich is commentating to let you know what's really going on. So it's exciting. Eric, it was an absolute pleasure meeting you, sir. Continued success on your career. Thank you for taking time and joining the broadcast team. Obviously, you know, it's not my call, but you're always welcome back, man. You guys of did a course. really good job. Burmis, for your first time commentating, I, said, I know you said you hadn't done it for MMA before. That was excellent, my friend. Like you Amazing. said, he does mix martial, mix, mix martial arts mindset with John Fitch. You want to talk a little bit about that? We do mix martial mindset every week, Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss it. I mean, John Fitch is a legend, and he puts up with my ass. <laughs> hey, man, I'll be tuning in, dude. The way you spoke tonight, I'm excited to see what you got to bring. Absolutely. Bringing the A-team, ladies and gentlemen. And again, tomorrow will be the Croatian sensation, Pat Militic, joining the broadcast team. Night number two, ladies and gentlemen, CatesAggression.tv. If you're not doing anything tomorrow night, come check us out. We have only just begun.